Welcome to Talk of the Tavern. A little about us, where you're at home interactive weekly geek con, all blended with wit, sarcasm, and a pub-like atmosphere. We're adults talking about adult topics and using adult language. We laugh and make jokes about almost everything. We don't intend to upset, but some folks have their feelings hurt. One second. This is all done in the humor and the style of the great offenders such as George Carlin, Red Fox, Lenny Bruce, Richard Pryor, Robin Williams, Wanda Sykes, Sam Kinison, George Lopez, Lisa Lampanelli, Chris Rock, and others. So grab your advice of choice, sit back, relax, and get ready to enjoy yourself in the company of great people, hot toddies, and guests alike, because here we come. Put that long day behind you. Good times lie ahead. With company worth keeping, that a big smile on your head. Come on in, the doors open, you'll find just the finest folks here. Pull up a chair, grab a drink, and let our stories your ear. Cause we're the talk, talk, talk of the tavern. Here you're always welcome. The talk, talk, talk of the tavern. Promising beer and bed love. The talk, talk, talk of the tavern. Music, medicine, then some. The talk, talk, talk of the tavern. The song's over. Here we come. And welcome to, oh, what is it? Oh, it's July. July 2nd episode of Talk of the Tavern. I am your host, Travis Sivart. Spilling my fosters everywhere. Do I even have something to wipe it up besides my face? I don't think so. Um, my advices tonight are fosters, and then I've also got a couple of nice lighter cigars, an Olivia and something I can't read without my reading glasses. Oh, hold on. My cat's coming to lick up the beer, so that's always handy. Come on. Come get the beer, kitty kitty. It's good for their bladder. Don't feed your cats beer. Drink your beer. Let me go ahead and, oh, Andrea wandered off. I'm going to start with introducing Ed. Ed, what's your vices today, bud? Hey, Sorry. people. I am drinking <laughs> you don't know. Woodford Reserve Cherry Wood Smoked Barley. Wow. How's that? We tried it. Oh. I think. I don't remember smoked barley, cherry wood, anything. Oh, okay. We will try it next time. <laughs> okay. That works then. I feel better. Hey, what about you, Kevin? What do you got today? I am drinking strong black coffee because it's been one of those days at work. Uh, and this evening I am smoking is it drum. Yeah, drum original blue. Uh, and I will, in between uh, conversation, be munching a sausage. Let me ask you this, Kevin. <laughs> do you notice flavor differences in different tobaccos? Mm. Now, is there one that is better that if like listeners wanted to send you cigarette tobacco you'd be like oh that's my favorite drum gold drum gold okay. it's getting harder to find these days but uh, it's in outside of the uk it's sometimes referred to by its european name which is duma which is basically drum right uh d-u-m-a okay and they make a, a, a version that's referred to as gold it's a milder tobacco because um, i smoke hand-rolled cigarettes without any filters in so i find the milder tobacco is not quite so harsh when you get down to the, the back end of it Okay. okay. And what about you, Andrea? What do you have today? Um, I have tea and coffee for now. Anything special there? Oh, I'll drink to that. Special kind of tea or coffee, or it, just tea and coffee? No, it's generic tea I made and coffee that I think it's Dunkin' Donuts in my reusable Starbucks cup. I save the environment, people. <laughs> Plastic is killing us. Let's not help it out. Um. Okay, and then our very special guest, at least special in my heart, we have. <laughs> don't roll your eyes, but I'm giving you an intro. What's wrong? <laughs> we have Eric, Eric Larson of TeslaCon, and more importantly tonight, ExpectoCon that we're going to focus on. Hi, Eric. What do you got? What are your vices today? Drinking, Nothing. smoking. I ate, I ate dinner early, so I could be on the show. <laughs> nice. Worry, what, so. Did you have anything good? Um. No, I had Progresso Light Soup and uh, my uh, diet drink, which just helps me not want to eat tonight. So other than that, no, I'm, I'm perfectly fine. Very good. So how's the diet going then? You feeling It doesn't. I, 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 I quit Weight Watchers. The damn thing doesn't work at all. You know? <laughs> that whole zero points thing is a bunch of bull. It, uh, it doesn't work. So that's right, Andrea. They lied. They lied. So Well, let's... Uh... 
Let's do it. So I'm just cutting out crap. So <laughs> that's that's a great way to do it. Here's to uh, enjoying what you do have, loving what you have, and uh, ignoring the rest of the crap. James. Respect mundo there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, everybody who is jumping in, hanging out, visiting with us, make sure you go below the screen. You'll see the share button right there. And this is going to allow you to. Who's rubbing their mic? <laughs> you little mic rubbers. Not me. Um, <clears throat> so, anyhow, hit the share button down there. That'll let you share it over to Facebook and Twitter. Let folks know that we're hanging out with Eric Larson and we're talking about different cons and everything. And to come join us and have a good time and share a drink and good company. Oh, <clears throat> so Eric, uh, at some point in time, I want to go ahead and discuss TeslaCon. Do we want to do it first and get it out of the way, or do we want to do that last after we talk about what we are really here to talk about? Which we can we can do it. We can do it second. It's fine. Okay, we'll we'll leave that so we'll to talk the expecto. end. Okay. Um, so ExpectoCon, let's get the basics first. When and where? It is August 17th through the 19th, right where I hold Tesla, which is the Marriott Hotel in Middleton, Wisconsin. Very and nice. And it's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday event. It's uh, one of my favorite things about the hotel is the balconies around the indoor seating area, atrium type thing, looking mm -hmm. at the bar. It's just pretty. Are you going to put your well, picture yeah, up in the lobby again? Uh, no, that's only for Tesla. <laughs> and this year we have a special one. But no, mm -hmm. uh, this year we have brooms flying in the atrium, so... Hey, oh, hey, I brought my broom with me. I don't think it's as fancy as the Nimbus 2000, but there we go. <laughs> and it comes with a dustpan. Yeah. Just so you can clean up as you fly by. That's really good. Yeah. But, that's, it's that's all a queen, uh, clean sweep. I love a Nimbus 2000. It looks more like a Krampus 2000. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's do a patch check because, you know, this is not a Harry Potter con for everybody out there. It is a broad there. spectrum thing. We're going to get to that. But now, of course, I have my Talk of the Tavern patch. But I also have my Ministry of Magic and Ravenclaw patch. So oh, I brought these yeah. for everybody. Any, Andrew, you got any patches you want to show? They're in your office with you. No, they're not. You took them out of here like a month or two ago. <gasps> Where's your patches? It's okay. I think the cat took them. They're probably out flaunting them. And I have a wand. around town. Oh, you have a wand? What? What's your wand? I have a couple wand? wands. This one is one made by some cute little girls sporting their... Their Hogwarts stuff, and they, they sold all of these, and, and they were so adorable. I bought so many of them, I but I kept them. one, um, gave the rest away. And they were like a buck a piece. They were like one to five dollars, yeah. and they mm -hmm. were... Depending on how fancy. Now, Eric, I, I know she mentioned a little before the show, but to give more for the viewers, these little girls, I talked to their father to go, hey, good job as a parent for supporting this. And he's like, they did it all. They had a lemonade stand that they went and they supplied with their allowance – and did a lemonade stand, and they wanted to do something more. So they went out and bought dowels and hot glue, and they helped them with that part. But they it was they were the motivating force, and the parents had to pay the way into the con because, you know, seven-year-olds can't sign a contract. Yeah. But that's all they did. And these little girls sold a ton of wands, and they were adorable and smart and motivated. So, well, and they had little bags with little stickers, and they'd put them in. It was so cute. And, and I only mention this because maybe there's hope for the future, guys. There are these kids out there, too. <laughs> uh, real quick, I have another one. Hold on. Let me say hello oh. to Toey, who's glad. Hi, Toey. John. Face is good. Whose face? Who's got a face problem? I don't know. Anyhow. Uh, yeah. Hello to everybody. What are you guys you drinking? Mean, you you mean. What? I was just going to say, presumably you mean other than the fact that I'm still stuck with this face I was born with. <laughs> I don't know. It's a, at least you got that voice to cover up the face. Ah. <gasps> what? What happened? Okay. Mm -hmm. So, Eric, as I said, the Expectacon is not a Harry Potter con. Let's not talk technically, about, no. But... Right. Let's talk about why and what what we're labeling it as instead well we're calling it a wizards and witches weekend mm -hmm. and 
if you, I mean, we get, we get into semantics and everyone does. Um, Warner Brothers started cracking down just about a year ago. We heard, you know, technically. But uh, it was this spring they really started cracking down on things. And they had fits with everyone. If you were a Harry Potter festival, which we have here in Wisconsin, which several people have been trying to do, and they've closed that one down. Mm -hmm. They've tried everything you can think of. They just don't want the name used in conjunction with a money profit making system. The, one of the issues though, is there are conventions that are still running as a Potter convention, yet they don't shut them down or tell them to stop. So there is sort of this thing. So I don't mind saying, yes, of course it's based on Harry Potter. Right. Come on, give me a break. We have, you know, Victor Crumb coming as our guest of honor. Give me a break. But we aren't doing anything official. So in other words, everything, and you know my background, but everything that you see, everything you touch, everything that's made will look, it, as I put it, it walks like a duck, quacks <laughs> like a duck, swims like a duck, flies like a duck, it's a goose. That's right. And it, it, can't, it cannot be exact. And that comes from my days of working on Star Wars and with Disney and with Warner Brothers. So, you know, there's that kind of a thing. Um, no. But other than that, I, I, it is not verbatim. However, everything that people have seen so far, they've liked. And they said that feels like Harry Potter. So no. I guess I'm doing it right. But with this, you're also happily including Dresden Files, Supernatural, and anything there's, else. There's going to be a lot of stuff like... There's going to be things like that where we're including different fandoms and during some of the trivia, things like that. If people want to come from uh, Game of Thrones and you're a Dragon Master, um, one of the big things we're doing is we have Gary Gygax Jr. coming, who, yeah, of course, is the son of Gary Gygax. Who, he doesn't do conventions much, but he is coming. He's going to be running games, and he's going to be talking about beasts and creatures just for us. Oh, so it's wow. sort of fun. I we also have Brian Donahue mm -hmm. and uh, Danielle Lieber, who are both authors who also do similar type things. They're going to be coming and doing classes and talking about the same type of things. So we're, we're trying to encompass a lot of stuff, but keep it within the magical realm. Right. But also have fun. So, you know, if Warner Brothers wants to look and go, well, that looks like Harry Potter. Yeah, we got 20 other things. So go bother somebody I, I else. I think Witches because and that's Wizards how I am Weekend is just a wonderful way to go because it does include really anything at that point. Once you get there, it does. Yeah. Um, and it's, you know, it, we are taking the cues from the films and that uh, sure. for optics, but basically, I mean, it's a lot of creation that we've had to do that I've had to do. <laughs> um, there's a lot more than Tesla con is. Really? I mean, there's some very expensive props. Yeah. There's, I mean, you know, I've, went all the way to Universal to look at the thing for three days. So I took a lot of notes, a lot of pictures, and uh, it's different. It's, it's not what, – what I find right now, the, the way I designed it is I see what the other conventions do, and then I realize they don't do much. Right. You know, the fans show up, they do the thing, and they're like, this is so cool – but there's nothing really special. And when they say it's immersive, they mean, well, we're just talking about Harry Potter for a weekend. Well, they, it's not immersive. They mean we put up a lot of posters and put on a, a black robe. And now you're immersed. Yeah, and no, they think, not. yeah, it doesn't work like that. And so this is going to be very different. I mean, I'm working on things like flying books where you'll walk into one of the classes. It'll look like books are flying over your head. Um, one of the things the kids will play with, they'll use their wands is they get to each of the things will be separate. And as they say the magic word, they don't need an RF wand like at Universal. They will actually make like a cauldron stir itself. Or uh, there's going to be one where uh, the screaming skull is the big one, which is the creepiest thing we have. And it's we're using an anatomically correct skeleton that's been sort of smashed together and it's bound and has these charms on it. When you do it, it, you know, it shows, ah, you know, and it'll scare the crap out of little kids, which is what you want. Uh, Sounds great. <laughs> so, I mean, there's, we're not doing the atypical thing. I don't want to do the atypical thing because you never I've do, been to do too you. many of those conventions. What now? You never do do the atypical thing, do you? No, I don't. <laughs> you're, you're known for your creativity and, and stepping a little outside the well, box and toying with the unusual. A lot of us... 
a lot of this was for my grandson and some of the kids. They really wanted to see something, and they don't always, of course, they can't all afford to go to Universal. But the other thing was, you know, I have been was talking to fans and looking at what these conventions do. They don't do too much. They mm-hmm. really, you just show up and you do your thing, like at a normal, what I would call a regular science fiction convention. Right. And, you know, great that they have, you know, 300 panels and, you know, the dancing and all that, but there was nothing that spectacular. Mm-hmm. And that just sort of got me as being sort of dull. Bland. I yeah. mean, if you're going to do it, do it. And so we're doing school. You know, you come to learn about, and it might be dry at times, but you're going to actually learn stuff. You're going to learn how to read ruins. You're going to learn how to, uh, you know, use your wand. You're going to learn all this different stuff you're actually going to learn. So it, the one comment I got from one mother was, why would I want to send my kids to school for the summer at the end of the summer? And I'm like, this isn't school like you think. It's a wizard school. Let's face facts. Most kids, kids would jump at it. You know, and I just that's the part I just think is sort of funny, but whatever. Kids actually enjoy school. They don't enjoy the concept of being stuck in a building having to learn. But once they're once they're gone from school, they're like, Oh, I've got nothing to do. They miss their friends, they miss the interaction, oh, yeah. they miss the stimulation. They might not know they miss school, but they sure the hell do miss school. And then once well, they're like an I adult, told her- we're all like, Oh, can we go back to that? I know. I think the thing, you know, what was funny was I told her, I said, unlike math class, we have dragons coming. <laughs> it's, you know, it's, they're 14 foot dragons. And so it's not what people normally would think. It's not, you know, we have a Sasquatch teaching beasts and creatures class. We have. That's a good point, because frankly, if we'd had a 14 foot trigonometry dragon, at my high school, I probably would have done a lot better at maths than I, I did. So. You would behave more. I think so. <laughs> no, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I can make that claim, <laughs> but I probably would have picked up more tricks than I did. It's a. Uh... Oh, I should have wrote my question down. I, I forgot it as we were talking. What's that, Eric? It's okay. I'll. What I thought I would do is I. Have, I have a piece of art. This is the kind of stuff, this is actually something that people get for free, but I'll show it to you if you can see it. Um, uh, opposite way, there we go. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. And that's one of the pieces I did. You and, did that. You know, I did that. One of my friends said, uh, they said, that looks a lot like the real thing. I'm like, it can look like the real thing. It just can't be the real thing. It's not, it has nothing to do with Harry Potter. It, it's a kid with a wand forming a mm. dragon in a forest, and there's a bunch of others we have. Nope. And again, w- one of the things I've learned doing the artwork is uh, Warner Brothers mm-hmm. and the movie studios were very lazy in doing things. We we actually have a lot of the original artwork, just like they have, and we can use it because they bought it off Shutterstock. And, <laughs> and I had to laugh at that because my you know, partner could get Shutterstock, and I'm like, I need this. He goes, sure, what is it? And I said, here, and he goes, oh my God, it's the same thing. And I'm like, we can use it. Yeah, we can we can use it. Let me, and let me, that's the thing. Let me ask you, can you do take that exact one you have and create mm-hmm. a guy holding a a pint glass in his hand and coming out of the wand a talk of the tavern logo? Can you do that? That'd, that I could that'd be awesome. That I can, yeah, you could even take the one I already have, I'll send you copies in PNG with a transparent background and then you just make it look wispy and smoky. And oh, okay. because and that's his Patronus. That. That's right, my Patronus. Yes. <laughs> that would be great. I'm not kidding. Okay, you'll get a you'll get a link or a thing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, okay. I didn't mean to pull us off topic though. But no, no, no. But um, but that it's just this isn't that difficult to create. And I think a lot of people are under the impression, oh, no one can do this. The fonts are from um, an online seller who's he's been selling fonts for years. Mm-hmm. They're uh, Civil War Western fonts. Anyone can buy them, but they don't. They go to defont.com and get the cheap, free ones that look like you know a lightning bolt and all that crap. Those aren't Harry Potter fonts. The real ones are from Walden fonts, and like Orfer and things like that. Uh, Bullion condensed. That's what you see in the books. That's what you see in the films. It's pretty simple. Let me ask you. So I've, I've stuck with that to make it look real for people. What's a couple of things that you're 
because you run the con, so you're kind of bogged down in all the technicals. But what's a couple things that you're just like, I am so excited to see this at the convention. This is well, we're going to have come to life. We're going to hatch a baby dragon. Uh, do we have Ed to sit Bounds. on it? Good. No, you don't. No, you don't sit on it. I think just the spectacle of watching a teacher who's a Sasquatch talking about baby dragons, and he's birthing one as he talks like a driver's ed teacher should be pretty funny in itself. So, um, so I mean, what you're by, saying I, is Sasquatch is real. Yes. Oh, of course he is. Sasquatch is real. You know, I just but uh, he'll also be wearing a jacket with leather patches and smoking a pipe. But that's awesome. <laughs> the, uh, the way he talks is now. I, I want. I want the class to just don't get excited. <laughs> just scare right. the little feller. You know that kind of thing. <laughs> uh, That's great. But you know, I think that uh, probably watching the kids with the uh, the wand activating sets will be sort of fun. I mean, we got a lot of little stuff too. We're going to have an uh, animatronic cat scaring the birds. Uh, <laughs> There is uh, some more. It's going to be really nice. So I think it, to me, like TeslaCon, it's sort of the whole thing. Now, TeslaCon this year, I admit, there's going to be one part that's two parts that are pretty big. But this one is sort of, I don't know how to feel about it yet because we're doing a lot of different little things. So they're all spread out. So mm -hmm. um, the one nice thing that'll be fun for people is when they come, the hotel is literally making a whole menu based on the universe and they're going to have things like cottage pies. We're having unicorn blood Sundays. We're going to do, uh, I'm trying to think now a lot of English style wizard food. <laughs> nice. So, well, that's something, you, you know, you've always done. You've always changed the menu up. And by the way, let me interrupt here and say hello to Victoria. Glad to see you. Sorry. We're not paying a lot of attention to the chat as we go along. Question. Glad to and see Kennedy. you. Kennedy. Oh, I, Kennedy, didn't I say hello to Kennedy earlier? If I didn't, hey, Kennedy, good to see you. And John and everybody else, quick hellos to you as we go back. Keep chatting. We'll get back to the chat in a minute. I just want to make sure I give Eric time That's to get funny. the great stuff out in the beginning. So bear with us. Um, but this is something you've done with TeslaCon for, what are we on, eight years now? Nine. Nine, nine years. years. I'm sorry. Um, but you've always so ten the technically, menu. so. And no, yeah, we always do. And it's not just a renaming of what they already serve. Some of it is. Oh, no. But it's this other is, uh, original dishes and whatnot. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. This year for TeslaCon, we're doing it a full English breakfast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we're doing it. And he's like, I don't want to do blood sausage. I'm like, well, you're doing it. Yeah, we're doing it. <laughs> just, just call it by its proper name. It's black pudding. Black pudding. But, uh, you know, there's some stuff they're like, uh, and I'm like... They were they they didn't want to go with uh, Yorkshire pudding, and I'm sort of putting my foot down for the ball and go. We're doing Yorkshire pudding, and they're like, "Who's going to eat it?" I'm like, "It's a popover. It's not a big deal. <laughs> it's you know, which I think is sort of funny. You know, I, I think they could you know freak out if I ask for a trifle or something. I mean, that's sort of messy and it's big. But, but by the way, Eric, popovers aren't that big of a deal. Kevin, so is the one that in Steampunk for Simpletons did the whole Victorian food cooking section, gave us recipes, and he is a professional chef in the UK. Just so you know, so you're talking his language right now. But, I mean, my chef is oh, yeah. more like, can't we just do burgers? And I'm like, no. <laughs> and the other thing we want to do is get um, the different sauces for things. Uh, uh, HP sauce and for the fish and chips. Uh -huh. And um, uh, malt vinegar. I mean, there's a lot of stuff I'm insisting on that most people would be like, what is this? Well, we're supposed to be in England for, you know, well, we're from England for Expecto, but we're in London, 1888 for Tesla. I want you to feel like you're in London, not Madison, Wisconsin in 2018. Mm -hmm. right. So... <laughs> Can I just say as well, for, for the remainder of this show, you are my new hero for championing oh, well. the underdog, the Yorkshire pudding. I'm okay. glad you insisted on that. I, the, excuse the swearing, ladies and gentlemen. I fucking love a good Yorkshire pudding. Oh, no, they're good. I mean, my, my mom and dad made them every Saturday night. We'd have steak. Mm. That was the thing at our house. And my mom made Yorkshire pudding or popovers. And the she made them a little Yorkshire egg. Pudding. Yeah, she made yeah. a little egg. And uh, we, did, we did put like a gravy on it. And we had, mm -hmm. we loved them. 
but a lot of people never had them and they're like what are those things and of course ours were like big they mm-hmm. weren't like tiny well, ours were big funny you should mention the size that's what i was just going to say originally when in yorkshire where they obviously developed hence the name what they were originally designed as a massive plate size pudding they were actually baked in a wide flat tray about the same size as a dinner plate and then the rest of the dinner was served inside the Yorkshire pudding. It was actually a container vessel for the rest of the meal. It's almost yeah. It's almost like a Dutch baby with a stew in it, basically. Mm. So what is a Dutch baby? Uh, oh my it's God. a large pancake, but it's they're reminiscent of each other, but they're two totally different things. Gotcha. Okay. It's, I mean, put it bluntly. Um, I'm just picturing a baby with pudding. I don't know. <laughs> It's a Dutch baby. Mm. I don't so, care where the baby's from. Split the baby down the middle, rip open the rib cage, throw in your meat and veg, drop that. Well, there you but, go. Uh, no, I, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty adamant on, on the menus. That's what, you know, we're, we're, we're naming the cafe. Um, we do a lot of stuff like that. This what, is, what uh, it's, called the, it's called the Tipsy, um, the Tipsy Cauldron this year. Oh, that's great. Because the, because the, yeah, the instead of the three broomsticks, it's the tipsy cauldron. I feel like but, I could just show up, set up shop there, with talk of the tavern, and stay there the whole time. Well, you could because <laughs> we're gonna have we're gonna have buttered beer, not butter beer, but buttered beer. <laughs> and uh, but yeah, is it beer with butter in it? What now? Is that beer with butter in it? What is that? Butterscotch. Butterscotch. <gasps> the um, problem is, we, you know, in order to authentically make it, the one thing we did we were there we realized what the topping was and it's quite disgusting it's basically an a melted down cool because it floats and it's so it's an oil it's not a it's not a oh. cool and everyone loves it i was like eh, the frozen stuff's better than the regular stuff mm-hmm. but anyway but, but no i i do try to make it i do try to make this stuff hey, bob. fun for people hey bob so. thanks for the cheer appreciate it bud here's you we just like to like, encourage them when they, you know, support us and be kind to us. So, okay. uh, no, it's uh, it's one thing that you're bringing over from your years and years with Tesla. Con- Th- thank you for that. Kevin. <laughs> it's uh, it is you love to post my things and go a step beyond um, your opening ceremonies and your closing ceremonies have always been amazing and very inclusive, and you. Pack a room for your opening ceremonies like no other convention out there. Thank you. So, um, well, this year I will say this: the the ending ceremony for Tesla Con is the big one. This is the year everyone's been waiting for to see how the story ends up before we do the final story, mm-hmm. and this is the big one. So, this is the year I'm warning everybody: if you want to come, come this year we because come. you won't get to see the ending any other way. Because we don't, we're not, it's a whole big production. And uh, it's going to be sort of spectacular to watch. So, yeah, we definitely want to come. It's a, it's on our schedule. And if everything works out, we're there. So, but um, no, I think once the, uh, once we have to finish it up and everything, but right now what I'm trying to do is get a lot of the, uh, the nitpicky stuff for that one done. Expectos first, so of course, I'm embroiled in that right now. So how so. crazy are you with running two in one year? Is it much different? It's nuts. Mm-hmm. It's nuts. Yeah, it's crazy. So I mean, we don't know how big Expecto is going to be yet. Um, it's known to be a, the last minute kind of thing with these people. So <laughs> it's different than steampunks, which plan everything out. I mean, right. still get people that need to know what color schemes we are a year in advance so they can start their dresses in February. Andrea, did you have a comment or question? I do. Is there going to be a sorting ceremony? We're we're thinking about it. The problem is a lot of the mechanics of this stuff. We don't want to do over over cheesy. We can't do the hat. We can't do the hat. And so we've been talking about things we could do. Um, and there's there are a few things we're going to try. One of them was a mirror, and the so, mirror actually uh, there's a two way mirror, <laughs> and the voice behind it will talk to you. <laughs> nice. It's actually pretty cute. And we do have our four houses. We have four houses. What do you have? But they're what a little houses? different. Well, they're sort of hard to explain. One's a hodag. 
A what? One is a, a, a hoed egg from uh, Rhinelander. It's sort of a, a forest beast. Okay. Um, it's in the Potter universe. Uh, we mm -hmm. have a, a lion with wings, and uh, it's a certain type of tail, but it's not a regular lion. Um, there is a white deer, uh, albino deer, with a blue glowing orb of fire in the middle of its antlers. That's the healing part. And uh -huh. then the, I'm trying to think now. Okay, I got that, that. The final one is, um, I'm trying to remember now if it's the, God, I can't remember. It sounds silly. The unicorn? Yes, the unicorn. Um, so, I mean, th there's a lot of different things we have. It's mm -hmm. just, I didn't, I couldn't copy it, but we made it fun anyway. I got you. And it's, so... That's the big thing is classes, though. We want the kids to go to the classes. We want the people to, you know, feel like they're actually doing something. Where can someone go to get tickets? Oh, yeah, that's a Expectocon.com. That's it. Okay. And there's plenty what is of it again? Expectocon.com. Okay. E X P E C T O C O N dot com. And, uh, takes you right to Ticket Leap, and you can order them there. And how much are tickets? 65 for the whole weekend. For the whole weekend? And right now, the whole weekend, and then day. right now, we're, we're doing, no, uh, we're doing $25 for each day. See, so that's great, because it, it, that's a great price. Looking at some of these, and they're anime cons, they're not even immersive like this is, but you'll pay $60 a day. So 65 for a weekend, that's a incredible price what what are the hotel rates looking at they're 120 for the night that's still that's reasonable it. too that uh you know yeah that's not too bad two-thirds of most of the hotels out there and it sounds like they're getting just really this is something i've said about your conventions since the first one i went to they're not a convention they're an experience you, you go in, it's a different atmosphere. The whole attitude of everybody attending and everybody working it is a little more laid back, but a little more professional at the same time, which is kind of an odd, weird thing to be able to work out. And it makes you feel welcome in the community instead of just these little clumps of people who know each other. Everybody seems to be interacting, and it's largely your your thread of events that you do throughout your convention. So the opening ceremonies, the different, mm -hmm. I don't want to say acts. I can't think of a better word because you have these plot lines, these threads that go throughout your convention that are acted out in the hallway or the main stage, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. And they're big this year. This year they're big. This is the big one. You, this you, is where everything, mm -hmm. all the shite hits the fan this year. Yeah, and you now get to find out everything. You're doing the same thing in Expectocon? No, Expecto is going to be more of an ongoing sort of a, you're going to learn about the school, but it's mm -hmm. more like the first year we did Tesla. It's more of a, a free-for-all open kind Here's of a thing. There's have. not a, Let's a see what true direction story. We yeah, okay. and we'll see what, you know, if people like it, then we'll go with it. If not, we can change it. So that makes sense. It, that'll be fine. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. But, it, but we leave it. The idea behind it is it's called St. Cyprian's School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And... St. Cyprian was a saint who actually was a sorcerer who converted to Christianity. And in Romania, mm -hmm. they have his arm. And if you touch the arm, it's supposed to dispel any bad spells that are placed on you. Of course. So uh, we named it after him. He is the patron saint of sorcerers and wizards and uh, people like that. So we went with that, and the idea is it's a school of requirements, so that castle itself actually will move around the world where it's needed, yeah. as opposed like to it. just staying in one spot. And so it's over in America because, as I put it, oh, some, someone who shall not be named is starting to take over in England for the first time. So we're in the late 70s. Gotcha. <laughs> so it's fun. So is it, is it Nixon? <laughs> well, just, just is it me that's right no it's not you Andrew it's Nixon <laughs> Nixon the wizard I'm not a wizard I'm not a wizard <laughs> that would be great just to have that somewhere in, in a repeating loop <laughs> <laughs> um, but no there's 
the story is pretty simple. The, I'm looking at it right now behind my desk. Um, <laughs> we have a, there's little things you do. Uh, you go to five to six classes. You get to graduate on Sunday and get your certificate to be a wizard or witch. So I mean, it, there's a you know we're gonna play um, pomp and circumstance. We have to. We're an sure. English, a Scottish school. We're a Scottish school off uh, the Isle of Hoy. So um, <laughs> we're on the tiny. We're from a tiny little island. And the whole thing just sort of moves. Part of it, the story is it's an ancient sorcerer who is moving uh, a Jewish sorcerer who was moving across Europe and the Romans were after him and he gets to the Isle of Hoy and they have to bring an entire garrison to try to capture him and he creates two giant golems and they protect the school what he creates is the school and they dispense of the Romans but he it's always there to protect people so the idea is through the centuries it protects you but if it needs to go somewhere in the world it sort of vanishes uh -huh. and then reappears what actually happens is the golems who are invisible come and lift the entire thing and take it anywhere they need it. So it's sort of fun. It's just, that's our little background story. We do have so. Lady Skipper who says, I want to be sorted into Waffle House. <laughs> yes! And by the way, uh, Lady Skipper... And that's great. That's great. I like that in Waffle Lady House. Skipper, they're the ones you may or may not have seen them at different conventions. If you've ever seen the giant dinosaurs that run around at different conventions. That's them. Yes. It's it's a shame you didn't have that connection with them back when you did the journey to the center of the earth. Oh. For TeslaCon. It's uh and they're just good people. They're fun people who do great things for the community. If you ever need dinosaurs, we know somebody. <laughs> it's we, them. We know a guy. We had a house Can I just there. say can I just interrupt to comment to something in the chat? Just to answer your question, Bob, I suspect it's because your wand isn't big enough. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go with that. Um, we had a house party, and, and we invited them, and they came up from North Carolina here to Virginia. And he came dressed as a dinosaur handler with a hand puppet where it looked like a fake hand around it. Mm -hmm. And his wife came in a dinosaur onesie with dinosaur crocs on her feet that had little claws and stuff. They were adorable. They were just adorable. It was great. So we have dragons this year. We don't have we right. have dinosaurs, we have dragons. Right, right, right. So it's uh so what do you got going on with dragons? I know you have the one that you mentioned. It's it's a dragonology class mm -hmm. and um <laughs> we're uh it's gonna be taught by a Sasquatch also. And then uh <laughs> It's you get to see a baby dragon hatch, and uh -huh. then you get to see uh, the different sizes as they come out. Very good. So you get to interact with yeah. dragons. Thank you for. And the I'm not tip. talking. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm talking like 14 foot dragons. I'm talking baby dragons. I'm talking three foot dragons. I'm talking the whole shebang. So. Oh my goodness. So are so, there any dragons for sale? No, they're pretty pricey. <laughs> <laughs> Ed gets them from China, and I know they're pretty pricey. Well, I wasn't so. sure if you had a vendor in there that was doing, you know, like a small dragon. No, we, we have like a we have a lot of people wanting to do wands, um, and I have my official wand maker, Peter Baum, who comes up and helps. Uh, he's a great mm -hmm. help, but he's a woodworker. Um, he's learning to spin bone into the the uh, the wands right now, and then he puts the ruins symbols in the bone itself. So, I mean, he has some pretty advanced stuff very so nice. it's really nice very nice it's a... yeah very nice <laughs> it says hogwarts alumni on my shirt somebody asked um yeah i heard you're you're gonna have some guests there you want to talk about oh, some yeah. of the yeah, guests people idea. can see gary gygax jr uh who uh, of course his dad created D D. he's coming um uh brian donahue an author danielle lieber an author they're all, they all, both the authors uh, talk about creatures and magical things. Um, and then the big one, of course, is uh, Stanislav, I always say his last name wrong, Ivyaski, he, uh from Bulgaria, and it's Victor Crum, the actual Quidditch player. So, so they're going to go. be doing stuff with him. Yeah. And then oh, speaking of Quidditch, oh, I'm sorry. And we have, no, go, go ahead, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, and speaking have, of Quidditch, are you going to have like a... A broom type game that people no. could play. No. no, we actually have the world tournament going on at the same time. Oh. So there's about 20 teams playing during the weekend, 
and you can take the transport out there and actually watch the teams in the field play. Oh, nice. Where they go awesome. on the convention to actually have a convention and a tournament at the same time, the first time it's ever happened. Oh, so, nice. Uh, so, I mean, if you're a Potter fan, this will be a fun weekend. I will guarantee that. It will be a fun weekend. Yeah, I get Because okay. no one's ever seen anything like this so i, I get the yeah. feeling more than just potter fans if you just enjoy oh, the magical I world anything if you yes. enjoy theater if you enjoy just an immersive experience where you get to break away from the real world for a weekend this would be a great first con for somebody or a great 50th con because it is something else it's not well you're well, one of the things we're doing to make so you understand this isn't all Potter for one simple reason. Potter doesn't have a lot of um, contextual stuff to it. I mean, it you can say the spells and that, but there's nothing beyond that. I mean, I have to do. I have all my Doctor Drake's Dragon books, and I mean, it, it, there's a lot of stuff we're digging into. I have a class on fairies that oh. is actually very, very in depth. And we're going to use it at TeslaCon, too. It'll be done in two different ways. But the, the fact is, it, it's a very in-depth class. And it's not, you're going to learn stuff. It isn't just, oh, this is fun and look what we're doing. By you know, the way, kind of let me interrupt. Yeah. Jamie no. Skipper just said, I'm with Dakota and friends who provided dinosaurs for TessaCon and will be yes. providing dragons for ExpectoCon. So yes. you do know Oh, him. so you know them. Oh, okay. There it was Ed. Okay, yes, yes. It's, Ed. Uh, yeah. um, yeah. So there you go. Uh, yeah. uh, Jamin, thank you for clarifying that. I am glad to hear that you are in on this because, well, I hope to be there too. So we could just like you know, high five as we pass in the hall and I could touch your dragon. <laughs> well, it, if you go to class, you can actually pet it. Can you? Nice. <laughs> nice. And, and we're coming, I, I want to break away and talk a little bit about TeslaCon because I know, of course, we had a bit of a hubbub this year on the East Coast with steampunk community and a lot mm -hmm. of people have uh, risen to the challenge and helped pull the steampunk community back together and testicon for me i love my different steampunk conventions you know uh, symposium um vendelia con a lot of the ones that are now gone like contemporal i always enjoyed these for the community but especially TeslaCon was uh for me like a crown jewel it was the, the fancy, and each one has its own personality. So this year we also have TessaCon, same time, first weekend of November, I believe, correct? No, it's the 15th through the 17th. Thank you, appreciate that. 15th to 17th. Um, it's the, always, the, we try to do the weekend before Thanksgiving because we're known as, we're known as the Christmas con because people shop for Christmas in the vendor room. We have a mm -hmm. huge vendor room. Mm -hmm. But the, uh, the other thing is, though, it sort of sets up the holiday for people. I think it makes, it puts people in a good mood. Does it put you in a good and mood? And that's pretty much, yeah. <laughs> After I rest for three days. <laughs> You're done. I don't do anything till Wednesday. I, I'm done till Wednesday. I then understand. Wednesday starts becoming normal again. And so, but no, so, I, I have, and then it's Thanksgiving, so I'm fine again. So, so can we talk a little bit about TeslaCon and what you're doing with that before sure. we get to the yeah. top of the hour? Go ahead. Sure. Um, what would you want to know? <laughs> What's the theme this year? The theme is the Battle of Britain. So Lord Bobbins is creating a new type of ship. Uh, as we, if you're... Well, you'll be seeing it soon on a lot of, uh, like, Steampunk Revolution and a lot of other groups. You'll start seeing the newspaper clippings. Um, the bad guys are swinging across Europe. They're taking over. They're killing all the heads of state, all the royalty, which is what they've always wanted to do. And by the end, it is England standing alone with the United States hurriedly trying to get across the Atlantic. And we have to beat them back. And the only thing that they have in their arsenal is one big ship they have a lot of little ships but the bad guys have a ton of these new type of dirigibles and i have something new that no one has seen yet it's called britannia and it's a big deal and when it works it works well and when it doesn't work it doesn't work well and something happens over the course of the weekend that changes history and when the history is changed it sets up for the last convention which is next year 10 
and it's not the final. Let me put it this way: it isn't the final Tesla Con, but it's the final convention of the of the story arc. Right. So ten, ten full years of one ongoing story, and this is the it's the commutants of it. You get to see the big ending, but this year it sets it up. You find out who the real villain is. You find out what happens to the current villain. You uh-huh. find out what happens to me. You find out what happens to Commander Krieger. And to clarify, it's all- your character is Lord mm-hmm. Bobbins. I'm Lord Bobbins. Just, just to clarify for anybody who isn't familiar with that. I'm, I play the Prime Minister. Yep. <clears throat> but Victoria puts me in a pickle towards the beginning of the mm-hmm. convention. And I don't like it. But I have Queen to Victoria. do it. Queen Victoria. Mm-hmm. And you'll get to see that, and then the story unfolds. Now, there's going to be a lot of things. Um, Saturday evening, we're going to have the ball, as usual, but it's going to be a much longer evening. So one of the things we're going to do, we're going to cut it out a little early so people have time to go eat early and then Smart. do stuff. Um, I always give everyone an hour to eat, and it takes another 30 minutes to get to rest, and I know this. So nice. what we're going to do is we are actually having ascot races. And just <laughs> as it is in... What the hell is an um, ascot my race? Lady, well, <laughs> your tie runs around a little... No. <laughs> Ask the point, I don't know. No, it's, um, it's a horse race. Oh, okay. And it's where upper society gets together once a year. And it's like, if you watch My Fair Lady, they sing a little song. We are actually going to do it just like that. The women are going to... We're going to have a hat competition, how big... The longest, the tallest. Um, and then we're going to have a bunch of people singing the song. And then we're actually going to have horses racing in the hotel. <laughs> we have promised an ask that, race. That sounds race. amazing. But I'm not telling you what kind of horses. But what's fun about this is it's all done Tesla style. So we are going to do that. There we go. And then you'll have about two hours of dancing afterwards. No, real so quick. Be fun. What? How much are Tesla Con tickets? Sixty-five right now. So there'll be seventy at the door. But there we go. Sixty-five, and that's mm-hmm. a full weekend again, right? A full weekend. That is a great price. Now we don't we don't have the yet. VIP tickets up yet. They'll mm-hmm. be coming shortly, but those start at one twenty-five, three hundred, five hundred, and then there's one for a thousand. And this year we're having um, for the top six tickets, mm-hmm. um, two women are building Queen Victoria's crownette. You get that, and I think the earrings, and then the big one, the thousand dollar one, and they're real, they're real um, jewelry. They're lab created uh, mm-hmm. uh, sapphires. Um, I love so sapphires. the crownet, earrings, and the bracelet, if I remember right. So, and it's all based on her actual design, and that's going to be part of it. There's also an eight or twelve piece um, place setting from. Um, it's not Lennox uh, Wedgwood from Wedgwood. Oh. So that's all part. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's about as British as we can get. <laughs> but, in in uh, the U.S. Um, yes, in the U.S. Is there anything else about TessaCon that you want to mention? Well, just um, I know there's been a lot of problems in our fandom over the last year. Obviously, you know, I'm out here in the Midwest and we, I try to keep up with what's going on, but obviously I don't get to see everything. And I know a lot of people were hurt. I know a lot of the vendors took a hit. Um, And so I'm going to hopefully be releasing something soon for people who couldn't end up going because of everything or there were some issues with bookings or something. I'm going to try to alleviate, I hope, some pain for people. And I'm going to offer, make an offer to people uh, to come to TeslaCon. Um, and you'll see that shortly. Right. So just look at uh, mm-hmm. Steampunk Revolution and some of the TeslaCon pages on Facebook and, you'll, and on our site, and you'll see something. No. That'll be in the next couple weeks. Okay. But um, I, I want to do something because I want people to end on a happy note. It, and I will admit, this is the darkest convention we're doing. And we did <laughs> Bulgaria last year. But this one's going to be a little dark. But it ends on a happy note. But the last, and what I tell people about this, the last five minutes, you have to be there. Because if you want to see how actually everything ends, you have to be there to see it. It's, it's one of those things where you, your jaw will literally drop. And I promise 
your jaw will drop when you see what happens to the characters. Very good. So, okay. Now, one more time with Expecticon. Um, mm-hmm. Tickets are currently on sale. They are on sale. Okay. And what I'm willing to do if I wanted to make an offer to people, and I know because you have a lot of the East Coast, mm-hmm. but if people are interested in tickets, okay, I'd be willing to give out 25 free weekend tickets. So you would only have to pay for the room, but you'll get in for free. So, um, and I don't know how we could do that. Probably best if people are interested, they could send you their names and you could send those to me. Mm-hmm. I would need, obviously, um, addresses, mm-hmm. but I, I'll give out 25 tickets, free tickets, full weekend tickets to people. You just have to find your way to Middleton, Wisconsin. But um, I want to do something fun and I want to get people excited about something. I'm, I'm trying to work out if I can get to middle to some response. There. there you go. <laughs> yeah. You just want the Yorkshire pudding. Yeah, you know it. Yeah, you've read my mind. You know, the Give nice, me that Yorkshire. The nice thing about this, I feel like these conventions is – now, Ed, for example, is not a convention guy. He doesn't go to conventions. But I feel like if he went to these, this is something he can enjoy also because – That's what we hear a lot of. Yeah. People who don't go to cons usually like ours quite a bit because the way we run them. And the thing is, they aren't like a normal con. You actually just have fun. Right. And the idea is you get to be yourself at these things. And it's it's a fun time. And they're different, though. It's it's more dress up and play than it is just walking around. But people have fun with it. Which is well, you've I, been there. You know? yeah, well, this yeah. is what I enjoyed about Renaissance fairs for years, is just dressing up and playing. It's I don't go there with an agenda, maybe buy a few things, but go have a good time and enjoy the show and here is the renaissance fair equivalent in a convention where it is like a whole renaissance fairs are a whole little town set up mm-hmm. and this is the equivalent inside a hotel it, it's yeah it's, and just... it's a beautiful thing so well, thanks eric i want to thank you for joining us my friend and hey let us anytime you know that to support you and help you yeah. out well, like I said, 25 free tickets to whoever contacts you and uh, who are interested in coming out here. Uh, there's There are hotel rooms available, and it is August 17th through the 19th. Mm-hmm. Um, but other than that, I just want to let people know that, you know, it's not your atypical con. It's You don't just pay, walk in, go shopping, and then sit and talk in the halls all day long. You actually go to a wizarding school, and that's what's going to be fun about it. And uh, Ed's going to be part of it, and a couple other people are going to be a big part of it. And we're just – the idea is to just have an immersive time in the wizarding world. That's really it. Excellent. And TeslaCon, you know what that's about. I don't have to Absolutely. tell you too much. But <laughs> I'm sure in a couple months I'll be back on, and we'll be talking about it again. So you Let me know when we can but, bring you in. And don't forget, we okay. have the weekday shows also. I don't know how your schedule is during weekdays. but I'm open all the time. There so. we go. Are, are you retired from teaching? Yeah, pretty oh, much. Well, congratulations. Yes or no? <laughs> mm, I actually want to go back to work in corporate, but uh, being 55 isn't a real conducive thing these days. So, oh, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and you can be a kid. 55 isn't all that up there. It's, oh, it is when you're trying to find a job in the corporate world of advertising. That's probably true. But, that's probably true. You think anyway, experience would count. But I appreciate it. I appreciate everything you guys do, and I'm glad you're still on and doing things and keeping the fandom oh, we're, connected. We're so. growing. We're, we're growing with Twitch, Good. and being alive on video has made a huge difference. And we've brought our regular listeners now into viewers. And, of course, we've expanded so much and grown so much. So. Good. And it's thanks to well, folks like you. So. And I want to thank you guys for giving me the opportunity to talk. And like I said, folks out there watching and listening – my company tries to make things that are fun for everybody over a whole weekend. And, and I just hope if you're able to come, you'll be able to enjoy it and actually experience something that's different from what you've seen before. So wonderful. That's it. Well, go enjoy your evening. And we'll so talk much. to you in a few months, give or take. Okay. All right. You take care and let me know. You too. You take care. Do. Bye-bye. Absolute Bye. pleasure. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay, guys, make sure you hang out. We are coming back with the last two hours where we do our normal stuff, and we will be reading off a lot more of your comments. 
Bob and Kennedy and everybody else who's <laughs> eagerly. We are just giving a lot of attention to our guests. And we'll get all back to your wand comments because, you know, we do. Yeah, we will. So let's go into yeah, a break will. right now. Get us ours, get ourselves some refills here. And uh, we'll be back with This Week in History. Ed, I'm sure you have something, right? Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Lots, lots of shit. Excellent. We'll be right back, guys. Hello, Kevin here. As a professional Englishman, I spend most of my time sodding about on the water being professionally British at people. Co-hosts of Talk the Tavern do the same. And here's the testimony of some of the great people we've had on Talk of the Tavern or previously on Sound of the Steam. Enjoy. This is Gail Carragher, author of The Finishing School and the Custard Protocol series, and you're listening to Talk of the Tavern. This is Aiden Sivart, Steampunk Indiana Jones. <laughs> Hey, this is Scott. This is Samantha. And we're, we're Frenchy in the, the Punk. Punk. I'm Karen Kay, also known as the Fairy Lady and editor of Fame Magazine and also founder of Fairy Events. This is K.W. Jeter, author of Infernal Devices and Fiendish Schemes. Kircher here. I play Biffer in the Hobbit trilogy. And you are listening to Talk of the Tavern. This is Trevor Crafts executive producer and creator of Lantern City. This is Lord Bobbins of Teslacon. Who's that? Steampunk Funk Bizarre here, Lord Monty, right in front of your radio. Hello, this is Professor Elemental. When I'm not taking a bath in gin or trying to invent a new kind of badger, I'm listening. Oh, yes. This is Stephen Davis of Raising Steam UK, two-day steampunk festival in Reading. Enjoy. I'm Thomas Williford of Brute Force Studios, and you're listening to Talk of the Tavern. This is Commander Bob of Victor Sierra. Je suis la légendaire princesse convertie de Victor Sierra. Hi, my name is Sarah from Valentine Wolf. Hey, this is Braxton from Valentine Wolf. This is Aileen the Peacemaker, the founding editor of Beyond Victoriana, the multicultural steampunk blog. Hey, this is Joseph C.R. Vortech, otherwise known as Electro Swing Neo Vintage DJ Vortech, and you're listening to Talk of the Tavern. I hope you come out of it in one piece. I'm not sure I did. And don't forget about our other shows during the week. Tuesday, Middle Age Gamers on Wednesday, and Virtual International Pub VIP on Thursdays. Make sure you join us there, 1 p.m. Eastern to 4 p.m. Hi, my name is Ashley Rogers. I'm the organizer of the Copper Claw. This is Calamity Dawn, mixologist of Airship Passepartout. This is Commodore Lorpicar of Lost Saints Curiosities. This is Jimmy Diggs of the Crypto Historians, reminding you that the future is in your hands. This is Gabrielle Real. Hi, this is D. Clarence Snyder, writer of the Bright Future series, and you are listening to Talk of the Tavern. This is Professor Marcus O'Bannon, the Chief Scientific Investigator for the Crypto Historians. This is Lady Gatita of Nerdvana. Hey, this is Angie Vello from Ghostfire. This is Hannah Titania, Queen of the Fairies. This is Jeff Platt of Highland Steamworks. This is Danielle Ackley McPhail, co-author of Baba Ali and the Clockwork Jin, and you are listening to Talk of the Tavern Radio. Hi, this is John R. White, author of The Tales of the Airship Neverland. This is Catherine Gleason, author of Anatomy of Steampunk, The Fashion of Victorian Futurism. This is opera singer Katie Cat. This is Keith Prusak of Bad September. This is Captain James Barrington of The Mighty Claxton. This is Emily Leverett, and I'm the editor of Big Bad, an Anthology of Evil, Volumes 1 and 2, and you are listening to Talk of the Tavern. Hola Radio Escuchas, les habla Lady Smoke de Sociedad de Steampunk Argentina y Sindicato Dieselpunk. This is Melanie Grace with Live Steamy. We are Warren and Betsy Talbot of MarriedWithLuggage.com. This is Christopher Meeker, author of Hawthorne, Chronicles the Brass Hand. This is Mickey Wonderland, Steampunk Fairy Princess of Wonderland with a fresh cup of Mad Hatter tea. Hi, this is Margaret McGraw, author of the prompt writing blog WritersSpark.com and you're listening to Talk of the Tavern Hello, this is Mishkin from Bird Eats Baby. This is Nim Derringer of Airship Hypatia. This is Painless Parker. This is Persephone Burroughs Dimebagger, co-captain of the Airship Hypatia. This is Psyche of Psyche Corporation. Ahoy, me darlings. This is Misty Massey, author of Mad Kestrel, and you're listening to Talk of the Tavern. I'm Ellie Ann from Steampunk Homes, author of Slice of Life and The Silver Sickle. Hope you enjoy the show. This is Captain Jared Cornwall of the Melanie Rose. 
Hi, this is Lucid Luminos with Tinker the Web Series. This is Travis Fessler, the steam-powered circus freak from the Pickled Brothers Circus. This is Scott Norman of The Wars of Other Men. Okay, good. We'll cut that short and bring us back early. Oh, you know what I need? My new screen setup is... Okay, there we go. This week in history... So, Ed, what happened this week in history? Shit happened, y'all. Thanks for joining July 1st. Go on. Yeah. July 1st, 1979, the first Sony Walkman went on sale. Hmm. I remember, that was some high-tech shit, man. Yeah, my mother had one. It's, uh, we weren't allowed to have one when they first came out. I, I didn't have a Walkman. I just had a boombox. Just <laughs> because you're black. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You didn't carry it on your shoulder. shoulder. It didn't count. Don't, don't, yeah, while I was don't, jogging. Don't be name <laughs> appropriate our culture. I had a boombox as well. <laughs> you can't run with a boombox on your shoulder. That's called theft. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Get your ass in trouble that way, man. Mm-hmm. July 2nd, 1977. Gonna Fly Now, AKK the theme for Rocky, hits number one on the U.S. pop chart. Ah, <laughs> oh, Rocky. Yeah. His birthday was also this week. I didn't put it in there, but his birthday was this week. Oh, so, happy, happy 137th birthday, Sylvester. That's yeah. right, you 37. <laughs> God, the plastic. Uh, July 3rd, 1985, Back to the Future is released. Hold on a second. Kevin, is that a beer? No. Can be? It's not coffee. No. No. No, it's a pink grapefruit cordial. Oh, nice. Mm. I like the grapefruit based stuff. I like that glass. Uh, That's a Carlsberg glass. Uh, It looks almost like a a flower vase. (laughs) (laughs) It It may or may not have been used for that purpose in the past. I refuse to comment. (laughs) I, I uh, I serve, I don't know if you guys have it in the US much, but we have Peroni. As a lager over here, it's an Italian lager. It's marketed in the UK as a, a premium top end lager. So, for example, a pint of Foster's will cost you around three pounds sixty. A pint of Peroni's four pounds seventy. Mm-hmm. Um, but the glasses are very similar to that, and I lose about two a week um, because they're very nice. So people nick them, take them home as souvenirs. But a while back, we were losing an awful lot of them, and one of our barmen caught a little old lady in her sixties putting one into her handbag. And so he said to her, I'm very sorry, madam, but you can't take those home with you. That's theft. And she said, oh, I'm so sorry. I feel so guilty. Here, take this one back. And the next day she came back and she brought back the 10 she'd already stolen. Oh, goodness. And she was <laughs> using them at home as flower vases. <laughs> but she got caught picking one. She got so guilty. She then returned the other 10 we had no idea about. We finally found out where we were on fucking Peroni glasses. We're going to watch out for those old girls. They're dodgy. I, f- I feel like you should go ahead and put one behind the bar with a price tag on it so people can buy them for, you know, 10 quid or whatever and take them home. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For a tenner, I'd do it. Yeah, not for much less. You should see what Peroni charged me for them. They're outrageous. Or it's what? Like four or five each. So, yeah. Well, what you do is you charge double or triple for the drink and they get their deposit back when they return the glass. <laughs> <laughs> I like your thinking. Back to the Peroni, sir. That'll be fifteen quid. Cheers. That's right. That's right. You can keep the glass if you want the glass back. We buy it back at a reduced price. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there's lots of places to charge a little more, and you get to keep the glass, and people pay it because they want the glass. Mm. <laughs> so back to the future, huh? Yeah. <laughs> a great movie about a kid who goes back into the past. To try to sleep with his own mother. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. That, not not to mention an incredibly bad attempt at miming Johnny B. Good on a guitar as well. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right. It's uh, as well as uh, a couple of other sci-fi things, including Star Wars. But uh, we found it amusing during the day. Oh, I put up something in VIP this uh, afternoon, which is basically a it's like a social justice warrior support group. 
and I wanted to share it over to our private conversation, but I didn't, so I just direct you guys towards that to go watch that. And for any <clears throat> viewers on Facebook, we have a closed group because we put some semi-offensive material in there, you know, just like the show. And, uh, yeah, you're welcome to join. Just let us know you watch via the show because there's questions so we don't get spammers. That's, that's VIP, by the way, the Virtual International Pub. That's on facebook mm -hmm. yeah and if you can't find it go to talk of the taverns page and then just when you scroll down just a little it'll say attached group or whatever linked group so okay ed what else happened uh july 4th 1826 the last two remaining u.s founding fathers died patriots turned adversaries turned friends pass away on the birthday of the country that they helped to found Following the War of Independence, the two became political adversaries, disagreeing on matters of state and how the country should be run. This is Thomas Jefferson and John Adams. Um, after both had, term, had served two terms as president, Adams would make the move to bury the hatchet between them in January of 1812. They would renew the bonds of friendship and spend the next 14 years corresponding back and forth. Oh, that's it is said, yeah. It is said that Adams' last words were, at least Thomas Jefferson still survives, not knowing that Jefferson had died five hours earlier that oh. day. Oh. <clears throat> Pretty cool. Uh, you know, I'm going to interrupt real here quick. Guys, mm -hmm. thank you for your patience in the chat while we didn't necessarily respond to all your stuff verbally. Also, keep in mind for any comments that may or may not be inappropriate, some of you are moderators. If you feel they fit in our chat, go ahead and approve them. If you feel they don't, go ahead and deny them. Uh, even mm. if it's from somebody we love and adore, every once in a while we say things mm. that maybe we don't want, <laughs> want in that chat. Um, yeah. Myself included. So there we go. But yeah. See, we get to say them out loud. That's right. <laughs> yeah, we do. Because right, we, we don't have a filter. <laughs> Personally or professionally. Uh, Bob, I, Bob, I'd just like to challenge the statement you just made there as well. You said July the 4th was America's version of Brexit. It wasn't because it didn't completely destroy your country in a suicidal and pointless move. Oh. Sorry, just getting that toughness worth in there. There we go. So, I'm not the biggest fan of yeah. Brexit. Elizabeth, is that is, is yeah. tonight the, the ball game? Okay. So Sorry? Yeah, um, I... I I asked her if she was coming on, and she sent me pictures of her and Pickle Man at the stadium. I forgot about that, so there we go. Like phone numbers. I don't know, Victoria, you can post your phone number. We'd probably let that go through. <laughs> <laughs> then again, maybe we will be getting some calls. Keep it for her. Keep it for himself. And, and thank you everybody for the bits. Andrea, I see you have fallen three bits behind Bob. Oh, that will change soon. There we go. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you what. I have always liked what they call, you know, girly drinks or whatever. Toei, thank you. Appreciate that. And by the way, Toei, post the link to the latest fakest for everyone. Everybody, <laughs> uh, Win Toei, is now doing a comedic fake news service. Um so and it's called the fakest so check that out as soon as she posts the link she is also <laughs> one of our moderators i think pretty much everybody's a damn moderator i don't know anyhow uh okay ed what else happened bud july 7 1930 construction on the hoover dam begins to hide megatron what uh oh yeah, I think so. yeah i'm sorry the megatron yeah. threw me off for a second and then i, I uh, remember uh, one of the how bad do you think the Transformer movies really are? They suck, but I, I have them all. I thought they were entertaining. <laughs> yeah. It, it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, uh, I think if you take it, it's like a lot of movies these days. Take them as what they are. They're okay. They're 90 minutes of easygoing entertainment that's heavy on the CGI. And if you like that kind of thing, they're okay. They're quite entertaining. If you grew up as an enormous fan of Transformers like it, I did, they suck. They, they suck, suck so badly. <laughs> There is a Bumblebee movie coming out, which is just Bumblebee, and I am thrilled for this because this is something I've said. They should have – we've got our Transformer movies. They should make a, other Transformer cells, as in groups of Transformers, that are brand new, that they can kill off without the audience whimpering too much. And you know, they have a different villain than Megatron, so he can actually be defeated and not show back up. Um, that way you have – 
the classics still exist and they're there with their storyline, but let's have these other storylines that take place in one place in the world, etc. So the Bumblebee movie, I'm hoping, is a step in that direction. It's kind of like the Star Wars movies where they're branching out into the solo stories and not Han Solo, but standalone movies. Mm. Why not? Why not? Mm. It's this way we get our love of Transformers, but we get something brand new for us classic fans as well as the new fan base. And by the way, in the new Bumblebee movie, he's back to the VW bug form, not the fucking Camaro oh. whatever he is. And I'm like, well, that's cool. about time. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. And it looks good. And um, my only my biggest complaint about the Transformer movies is part two, Bob. the CG kind of sucked. Uh, it was too CG. Everything kind of bled together, and you couldn't tell one thing from another during the fights. But all in all, they're a good popcorn movie. You know, no real depth, and I don't have a problem with Sheila Booth because he was an actor that played a character, and I do love Mark Wahlberg. Yeah, you do. Yeah, I do. Me too. Absolutely. Marky Mark. You know, uh, uh, Bob, that's actually... I, I realize you're, you're being uh, silly there, but really... No female trans. It's true. There are. There's a villain female one that's really sexy. Yeah. Uh, it's in part. In the movies. Yeah, part three or four when he's in college. She's like a hot co-ed. Who yeah, she you have that, that movie? thing down his throat. Yeah. I do. <laughs> I do have that. Movie. I need to watch it again. Yeah, I'd have to go and see which one it is because I don't remember because they all kind of. Cool. We can watch all of them. I'll Let's watch do all it. Of them. Let's do that. Right. We'll just do one a night and we'll see if you stay awake. You know, Countess <laughs> Victoria. Yeah, uh, I have I have the CD um, and I, I listen to it. It's in my playlist. Mm. At least three of the songs off the CD. I had it on cassette, so I don't have it anymore. But one, the, his money song. There's a line in there. He goes, oh, yeah. you know, I'll work at Burger King, and because a dollar is a dollar, you know, and making money is twenty not, bucks is twenty bucks. Pretty much, pretty much, yeah. And I, yeah, yeah, absolutely. If you're gonna make money, you gotta start somewhere, and there is no shame in slinging. You want fries with that? No shame. Okay, I'm done. What else, Ed? <laughs> uh, 21 years ago, Man in Black was released. Mm, oh, wow. Another great sci-fi based after a comic book um, that is just fun and awesome. Yeah, um, it's just fun. That's it. Yeah. Uh, uh, 32 years ago, one of my favorite, definitely in my top ten, Big Trouble in Little China. Oh, Cult yeah. classic. Yeah. It's a movie. I, I put it on probably every 12 to 18 months I watch it. And, Same uh, here. And they're remaking it with Dwayne Johnson. And I'd rather, <sighs> well, I'd rather it be, of course they are. instead of a remake, I'd love to see it 30 years later. Do a new one. Place. Yeah, yeah, like they did with Jumanji. Or, or Ghost, a different well, one. No, Ghostbusters was a reboot. Yeah, like Jumanji. Um, Jumanji, yeah. yeah. Toey says it, it's in my top ten, and thank you, Skipper, for the cheer there. Appreciate that. Um, cheers. Yeah, cheers. Let's drink with that one. That's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. We'll toast the Skipper because he has a birthday coming up this weekend. He does. So. does. Mm. Cultural, <laughs> culturally controversial. I can't believe he's 21 already. You know what? <laughs> Kennedy is I, – I can see where people who are overly sensitive would say it is. But all in all, they actually used Asian actors for the Asian roles. And it was just fun. And I saw a cosplayer last year at Mysticon, this year at Mysticon, who played mm -hmm. Thunder, one mm -hmm. of the bad guys from that. And he looked great. And I enjoyed that. I don't know. It's a fun damn movie. And Most of those, if, if you ever watched any of the old martial arts movies... All well, of those actors were in all of those old martial right. arts movies. Uh -huh. Every one of them. <clears throat> yeah, it's kind of like... Because there's only a, five. When we have a little <laughs> person in a movie, it's one of two people. You know, we have a black guy, it's Sam Jackson, or... No, not Denzel anymore. You know, it's Sam Jackson or... Or one Freeman. Of it's Funky Punk. Chuck, what's up, buddy? Sorry you didn't win the uh, Scrotum. Scoundrel the scrotum? of the Month. Yeah, it, it looks like Scrotum. Um, uh, uh, Monster, uh, yeah. cigar group I'm in they did a thing where everybody just says I'm in at the end of the month they choose a name and everybody else who entered has to send them one or more cigars 
and it's a great you know idea. i might do that it, they just started up the new one so and i've got last month's set up here and i'm going to set aside next month's or this month's i should say july's denzel's got a new movie they do it every month up. yeah uh yeah every month okay. they're on their third month uh lawrence fishburne okay. there we go see we have some i i feel like we should have we we have our stable of white guys that, hmm. That's our go-to white guys, Tom Cruise, Dwayne Johnson, uh, Mark Wahlberg now, et cetera. And I feel like we should have a large... Those are white guys. Yeah, that's why I said we have our stable of white guys. I feel like we should have mm -hmm. our stable of, of... And not just guys, but ladies also. Yeah. Uh, part of the spelling... Yeah, no, we're good. And if there's ever Talk the Tavern movie, I want to play... Ed, is that wrong? No, <laughs> no, Kennedy. No, that's not wrong, but I think you might have to that's fight great. with Bob. About that. <laughs> no, Bob can be just, himself. That's true. Yes, Bob can do a Bob. Robert Downey. Do a Robert Downey Jr. from Tropic Thunder. <laughs> just black <laughs> out. Just out. By the way, Funky Punk uh, says Terry Crews. What is it? somebody? Mm. Terry Crews is in the news. Yeah. Something yeah. about being a beta instead of an alpha male or some shit like that. What? What the fuck yeah, is wrong with that? Yeah, supposedly. Yeah. Oh, I didn't see that. Uh, other I, stuff. I like his roles. He's funny. He's tough. He's still. Uh, I think it was Chuck and Larry. Wasn't he in that one? Was that him? Am I thinking the other guy? Uh, I don't know. I just remember white chicks. Yes, because that's. <laughs> <laughs> I like Terry Crews. And by the way, is he, if he is a beta male, what the hell is wrong with that? You can only have so many people at the top of the heap. And without everybody just below that person, that person don't mean shit. Yeah, but, if you don't have anyone under it, you don't have to hire out. It, shut up, people. Just shut the fuck up. Ving Rames, thank you. Ving Rames, thank you, Chuck. Yeah, that was Ving Rames. I like him, too. He's funny. And uh, Countess says, need to do a Talk of the Tavern porn parody. <laughs> um, on YouTube. Oh, see, I read party. See, I was ready. <laughs> <laughs> um, on YouTube, Maybe James family. Gunn has a series of family-friendly porn. It's porn without the PG porn. porn. PG porn. Hilarious stuff. Go look for James Gunn, who's the director of Guardians of the Galaxy and a few other great movies. Um, hilarious. hilarious. Hilarious stuff. Okay. Terry C. is a big vag, says Bob. Uh, I don't have a problem with big vag. I'll just let you know. Me neither. I definitely don't. <laughs> Ed creates. I consider bad. it almost a prerequisite. <laughs> Talk of the tavern. <laughs> oh my! Hey, it's not the third hour yet. That's okay. We had a guest, and we're really well behaved during that. We can extend it yeah, for an hour, two hours. We Let's haven't even it. finished the news. Let it's him finish always, the news. It's always the third hour. <laughs> Okay, uh, 47 years ago, the original Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory with Gene Wilder. Oh, I saw a thing recently that says, is the Willy Wonka story actually comparable to Dante's Inferno? And they, they compare all the kids to gluttony and, and all the other, you know, seven deadly sins and how they're punished in the Chocolate Factory. And at the very end, of course... Here we have Charlie getting into the magic elevator and ascending into the heavens. And I'm like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what a line of bullshit. Mm -hmm. But it's an interesting concept. It, mm -hmm. you know, I yeah, I was going to say, the answer to that is no, but I can see where you're coming from. Yeah, yeah. I like that you brought that up. It's just no. a movie. Just a movie, people. Shut the fuck up and enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, 29 years ago, Spike Lee joint, do the right thing. No. Oh. I think I saw it then and haven't seen it since. It, does his movies have staying power? Is it something we rewatch? Well, well, the one that we talked about, or at least I talked about the other week, Jungle Fever, that had staying power, if you know what I mean. Yeah, it did. <laughs> I meant do you rewatch it, <laughs> not do you live it. Oh, oh, oh that. Oh, no. He uses it as an example. There, there's still good movies and everything, but I don't often put them into the rotation of what I want to watch again. I have a number of them in my collection and it's a very rare. Rewatch. It's like, uh, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. It's a weekend every three to four years. <laughs> yeah. Victoria um, says she likes Willie. <laughs> Tell us something we don't know. And Ronald Dahl ripped off Dante. Uh, can't, Willy Wonka can't be a pedo bob. He didn't work for the BBC in the 70s. And Chuck says the laxies are not talking about the staying power. The staying power. What are laxies? Is that a award then? I don't know. Chuck, let us know what mm -hmm. that is because I'm ignorant on that one. Ed, what happened? Oh, ladies. 34 ladies years. Okay. Oh, okay. Ladies. Mm -hmm. uh, 34 years ago, Prince released his sixth studio album in my favorite, Purple Rain. It is my favorite. Right beyond, or, uh, and just after that is, what's the one that had Thunder and the one with Pearls? Uh, Diamonds and Pearls. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I like that one, too. It's a, and those yeah. are my two favorites. The rest of his, eh, you know, I can get the greatest hits and kind of hit most of the other stuff. All, all the songs that you like the most, yeah. Beret and, and Little Red Corvette. And all. If you've never seen a YouTube video of it either, go and look up. My God, that man could play guitar. <laughs> That's something we don't realize. We also don't realize he was like, I don't know, four foot seven or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure we all re recognize that. Yeah, the pint sized purple Prince of Perth. Well, we don't necessarily. Oh. But his hair was very big. <laughs> yeah. At one point. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I always thought. A fro that goes up. Uh, he, he looked like someone should have made a movie about him. Honey, I shrunk Phil Linnett from things. <laughs> <laughs> One of his albums, I believe it was the Controversy album, he played every instrument and every song on the album. Oh, In fact, wow. I'm going to save everyone the trouble, because if you've never seen Prince play guitar, I'm going to go and find the video I'm thinking of, and Kevin, I'll post the link in mm -hmm. chat. So. Kevin, while you're doing that, last Thursday we had Zola Mark of Pink Cocoon out of Canada on, and he had Canadian an metal, out. Kevin. He has an EP out, six songs on it, but they are reminiscent of sabbath and Jimi hendrix had a baby and he played every single instrument on the album on the recordings the drums guitar bass vocals and it sounds great um a little bit weird, got, like this huh you got a link you can send me in a bit i'd be interested yeah, I, do, I do and i did send the music over to uh white party radio so they can play it because i felt like but psychedelic punk modernized and it's it's a great beautiful blend um and give me a second uh, there it is pink cocoon band um and it, it is the interview with him he stayed with us all three hours it didn't oh no two hours andrea two hours. Um, two hours and i put the link in the chat there so you could check he got a pink cocoon that's right we asked him about that and i totally because mm -hmm. i don't mm -hmm. have a filter i went so pink cocoon where'd that name come from is that a vagina reference Totally said that on air, asked it straight up. It's not. And it's not, but he says it could be, and he didn't get upset or anything, which is great. Um, <laughs> you can yeah. use a link. Uh, sorry. I think if you had a link for your picture, mm, yeah, so there's a, a comment I just read. It. It. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. At least once or twice a night. <laughs> Ed, what else happened? Okay. Um, Andre, <laughs> 72 yes. years ago this week, the bikini was born. <laughs> I want to see that birth. <laughs> Where'd that come out of? Who came up with that, you know? That's all the history. I I have some some current events, but I want to say that if anybody else has current events, we'll talk about those first and talk about this current event last. But... Uh, Anybody else? Current Real events? Quick. Weird news? Andrea just posted a link. Guys, please go follow her channel. We're doing live gaming on their tabletop role-playing games. It's silly and fun. It's us playing superheroes or Dungeons and & Dragons, and it's it's a mm -hmm. good time. Um, so I need 50. I have 31 followers. I need 50. Kennedy resigned. Wait. Which Kennedy? Not you, Kennedy. Not Joseph Kennedy. What? You can't resign. We, we like you around here too much. And Kennedy is also going to put a story towards uh, Wednesday, July 4th. We have Tara joining us, Tara Moeller, and she's working on a fairy anthology. Victoria listening? We need fairy stories. 
Um, mm-hmm. And Kennedy, it, I think he's going to throw his, his story into the hat there and see if he can be a part of that. So, what can um, you can Oh, ask? Chief Justice Kennedy is on. Yeah, oh. yeah, 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 yeah. I, I want to say, um, Funky Punk said, you know, after the invention, the birth of the bikini, to be quickly followed by bikini wax. Mm-hmm. The birth of bikini wax. <laughs> this is true. true. And now we can find videos of men using wax on their genitals and be very amused. And <laughs> it's hilarious. A quick cheer out to women for what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> and a shout out to the surfer who first introduced me to sex wax. There we go. <laughs> and uh, Andrea has found a new way to take care of that issue uh, without bumps. Flamethrower? No, no. Milk and cats. Did you say milk and cats? <laughs> <laughs> Why not? It's as plausible as any other explanation. I've had a bikini wax. Well, I had a Brazilian wax once. Oh, my God, people. Fuck, who invented that shit? Why did I pay for that? I don't know. But basically, there is a black hair product out there that's essentially an oil that you use in the yeah. shower. And if you use that when shaving, a lot less bumps. And by the way, for white people who don't is- know, the hair follicles of black people are a little more aggressive. So when shaving Ed, and you can correct me or back me up, whatever is the case. I'm not shaving Ed. What? Well, when, when you see a lot I'm of black you. folks, when, when they shave, they, they get all kinds of <laughs> rash. And not so much anymore because there's products out there now. But, yeah, using this for white people when shaving, if you like to shave downstairs, this stuff works great. It's just milking a bull. Yeah. The hell, our cat's <laughs> gone wild. And, and Victoria... Milk I, and cats. Not milking cats. Milk <laughs> oh, and no. cats. You get it? Cat's got a rough tongue. Put some milk on it. Do I have to explain it to everybody? Yes, Come on. please. <laughs> no. Bob, Bob, says he, Bob says he gets the bumps now when he shaves, but he only gets yeah. 0.4% of the amount. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and Victoria, I will send you that link. Um, I'll drop it in the messenger for you later. It's, we have a Facebook closed group for it, etc. And yeah, it looks like we dropped it in MarsCon because this is what it's being done for for next MarsCon. And they're going to see if the two writer guests, the young adult writer guest and the adult writer guest, wants to put a short story into it. So that's a beautiful thing. Um, looking forward to having that grow. <laughs> Sorry, Countess, it's distracting. Very distracting. <laughs> Ed, what else? Heard? There you go. Uh, I hit okay, the um, shave. It doesn't help that I'm shaving strangers at bus stops. Very true. You use oil, it'll be more pleasurable. It's okay. For everybody involved. And yeah, did anybody else have any current events before Ed goes on with his? Not anymore. Go ahead. I forgot to talk about this last week. I meant to bring it up. President Trump wants to create a space force. Yeah. Why don't they just take Stargate Command and turn them into the space force? I, I don't understand why we need taxes for another space force. Okay. We I already agree. have Stargate Command. I have to agree with you. By the way, my opinion is this is how we should be exploring reaching other planets is by creating wormholes that we could transport ourselves like a fax electronically or physically. Like a transporter from Star Trek, you basically unassemble the molecules, shift them through, create a clone, a copy on the other side. Um, this is where we need to be looking at when we're trying to explore and test it by sending a satellite through and, and communicating that way. You know. Did I get too serious? Yeah. Did, did I get off topic? No. Okay. I, no. I'm totally serious. No. Flying to another yeah. planet outside of our solar system is ridiculous. Uh, until we can achieve faster light. And then even with faster than light travel, we're still looking at hundreds or thousands of years for this. You, you still need to talk about inventing essentially some form of either stasis or cryogenetic right. science, because otherwise you're never going to send a manned expedition outside our solar system. The, the length of time it would take to travel there is ridiculous. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, real quick, backing it up, Galaxy Quest, yep, uh, from Ken or <laughs> Chuck. 
By the way, Countess says which oil? Seriously, coconut? Andrea, what is that oil called? No, um, it's got different oils in it, like olive oil, jojoba oil, things like that. You can use just olive oil, but this I had because I use it once a month on my hair for a hot oil treatment. It's I, two bucks a bottle. I also use it on my beard. Oh. For you gentlemen with beards, instead of it getting dry and, and bristly like a broom, you put a little bit in there only about once a week. You leave it in there while you're washing the rest of your body, rinse it out when you're done, and it makes it softer, more malleable, and shapeable. Ed, I'm know, looking I'm for – oh. It's got butters in it, don't it? Yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. Hold on. I'm getting the – um. I bet you it's got, got shea it. butter in it. Black folks, we're big on shea butter, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's the black folks. Um, I got the mine at Target, but apparently, like, Rite Aid has it. I'm going to send – I'm going to put in the chat a link so you can see what it looks like. It's also great for masturbating in the shower, guys, because it doesn't give that sting like shampoo does. Just saying. Makes everything. <laughs> I'd say soft, but that just. I don't enjoy a sting in the shower. There's barely enough room for me, let alone him. <laughs> By the way, Bob, I just answered your question. Yes, you can use it on your twig and berries. Absolutely. Uh, I think yeah, you can use it everywhere. <laughs> And Toey did say, I, I, it's think less our, sticky. Our, our, I think our entire sitting government should be shot into space. Brand of oil. Mm. Um, well, I sent a link. Um, I, I sent a, I put the link in the chat, Victoria. Check it out. It is called, it's called African, Africa's, Africa's Best, Best Ultimate. Yes. Yeah. So there you go. And if you watch some of my store videos, I actually pick up quite a few of their products, and they're hilarious. Um, but they work because I buy this. Yeah, it's. Uh, I love black girl hair stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're appropriate. Is that culture culture. appropriation? <laughs> <laughs> and water is racist. Mm. Okay. What else you got? What moving on? Yeah, what, moving on. Uh, did people Joe Jackson and uh, How as sad Kennedy said. Uh, yeah, I I didn't even put down the date. He Abusive died. Abusive father, you know, yeah. bit of a scumbag yeah. asshole. Yeah. I mean, That's what we heard in the media. I didn't live there. I don't know. We heard from his kids. Yeah. You know, Pretty so, much every one of them. Yeah. It's... Uh, and not that, you know, somebody's not missing them and crying over them, but, yeah. It, well, it, I saw all these posts and things on Twitter about the grand the grandchildren. Mm -hmm. They're very upset about all the bad things being said about their grandfather. That's because okay. grandkids don't know the same person that kids do. No, they don't. No, absolutely not. <laughs> so that probably means my grandkids will think I'm an asshole because I'm a great dad. <laughs> Hey, Countess, my, my, let me know when you want to appropriate a little bit more black culture, darling. <laughs> <laughs> what were you going to say, Kev? I was going to say, my, my stepkids don't even know the truth about their dad, let alone their grandparents. There we go. There we go. It's, uh, no and I pray that continues for a long time. No one is falling for the coffee cup, really. Uh, what coffee cup? I'm apparently missing it. Kevin's oh. coffee. Oh, Kevin. Oh, okay. Kevin's got a coffee, Kevin. Totally Sorry, right. this is my attempt to remain, to, to restore my manliness after quaffing my pink grapefruit. <laughs> Hold, on. Hold on, Chuck sent me a, a photo here. Uh, oh, nice cigar. What do you got there, Chuck? Okay. Chuck sent me a picture of his cigar right in front of the talk of the tavern screen. Yeah, he did. Um, mm -hmm. and, and what hey, am I hey, Travis, he... Yeah. Travis, you impressed? I've still got one cigar. Do you? It's uh, yeah, still in good, still in good condition. I have oh. a series O is what I'm smoking right now, which somebody sent me, and I don't remember who. I should track that better. Um, um. in a couple of weekends' time, my wife is taking our children up to see her parents for the weekend mm -hmm. in Kent. But unfortunately, it's the same weekend that my boss at work has the weekend booked off, so I'm not able to go with them. So although I'm working all weekend, I have a weekend where I have the house entirely to myself. 
So okay. one night I'm going to come home from work and I'm going to smoke that cigar like a bastard. Well, <laughs> I'm going to smoke in. in every room in this house, except possibly my door is bedroom. Here, here's what I'll do, Kev. When you go to smoke it, let us know. We'll get you on air. We'll do a live stream. If we're already doing one, we'll bring you in. Even if it's Andrea's and you're like, I don't want to play your game, we'll let you sit in on the game. You Just sit, smoke the cigar in the background. And make comments. Yeah, why not? Now I've been saving this beauty. Which one is um, it? You should left? have something know. coming I'll your way, have... Kevin. Ooh. Yeah, we, we, yeah. we sent something over. It, It'll be, is, you'll get it next year because I sent it last week. Oil. What's that? <laughs> is it some groinal oil? <laughs> uh, it's a Hudson Bay. Oh, okay. Those are a nice medium bodied, um, mm. medium flavored. Uh, yeah, I sent him those high quality white owls. I forget what I sent him, to be <laughs> honest, but I sent him a reasonable selection, uh, one full body because he doesn't smoke regular, so I don't want to kill him with him. But uh, but that was good. It's oh, that was good. I enjoyed that. Especially if you eat the right thing just before for the full body, it's a nice big heavy meal, a good steak, or um, but like that one, you could go with uh, anywhere from fish, which might be a bit light to definitely a nice pork meal or a uh, pasta. A pasta might be really good for that just before. And to drink with it, go a with something. Lenox? Oh, Lenox is right. just a type of cigar. I don't have any of those. I am down to a handful, and a bunch of them are about to go out to uh, the the Scotum thing. So, yeah, I'm down to a handful. and uh, I've got some You're empty- sticking your cigars in your scrotum. Like <laughs> it's a, and mailing them to another man. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Who else died, Ed? Uh, that's it I got for dead people. I got birthdays. What do you got? Hi. July 1st, 1977. Actress Liv Tyler. Oh, lovely. Whoa. Yeah, she's a little cute. God, love them lips. Mm. Oh, you got to admit, though, genetics-wise, Ed, she really lucked out when you look at her dad. <laughs> yeah, he did. But then again, she also doesn't have four decades yeah. of drug abuse. This no. is true. Do you know what? One of my favorite musical quotes ever revolves around that. Uh, after the band cleaned their act up, Rolling Stone magazine did an interview with um, Steve Tyler and Joe Perry. And one of the questions they said to, they said to them was, in the 70s, your drug consumption earned the two of you the nickname the Toxic Twins. Mm. But can you define it for us? How bad was your drug use? And Stephen Tyler said, well, we think nothing of going out on Friday night with a kilo of blow and some hookers and waking up on Monday morning with some hookers. Wow. Wow. Uh, how big is a kilo? Is that like a brick size? Yeah. I, I, it's a thousand grams. That's, that's uh, a lot. I have no concept of how big. Much that is. Um, Chuck says, uh, "Best looking thing that came from a large mouth bass and a woman." <laughs> uh, there we go. There goes Andrea and Bob bouncing back and forth. Where is Dez and Devno? It's uh, yeah. Okay. I mean, I haven't seen Ian in a while. Victoria says a medium is. body is good. I'm so glad you agree, because mine's heading for, through medium towards extra large. So. We call it full-bodied. Oh. It's already there. Victoria <laughs> 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 oh, says, you notice, by the way, I'm wearing a tavern-inspired T-shirt tonight. What's that one say? I can't read it. It says, to the pub. To the pub. Nice. Absolutely. Okay, who who got birthed this day? Uh, okay. July third, nineteen sixty-two. Actor Tom Cruise. And by the way, uh, Top Gun lovers, there's a Top Gun sequel coming out now, thirty years later. More volleyball. Wow. <clears throat> Is Tom Cruise in it? <laughs> yes. Uh, mm-hmm. pres- presumably as like the the bitter ex-pilot now running yeah, the top. I'm, I'm not sure what his role is. A- apparently Goose's son is going to be in it. So, you know. From whatever. what I understand, ah. they're also doing humans versus drone piloted planes. Oh. Um, uh. And Kennedy says small, medium, at large. I told that dad joke last week. <laughs> <laughs> Bring back <laughs> Iron Eagle. Yeah. That's what I say. Iron Eagle. Oh, yeah. 
It was a hey, thing. our cup is full. Nice. Splash that cup. Um, there are a few things by... Oh, who the hell was in Iron Eagle? What, what was his name? But he was... Oh, Luke Gossage. Uh, Luke Gossage Jr. Thank that you, yeah. Enemy Mine was a great movie by him. Iron Eagle mm-hmm. was... It was like Top Gun Light. It was a little more fun and silly and... But not ridiculous at all. I, I just yeah. love the fact that your accuracy as a fighter pilot is greatly increased by listening to Queen in the cockpit. Yeah, it is. <laughs> oh. And uh, Bob wants you to eat <laughs> that cookie slowly, please. Luke Gossett Jr., <laughs> officer and a gentleman. And Victoria yes. says, my cups are full. Hell yeah, they are. <laughs> well, I've got banana in the fridge. I can go and grab if you get desperate, mate. Oh, Victoria, let me tell you, if you do another video for us, instead of portrait, turn your phone sideways, do landscape. It fills the screen better for us. Yeah, we can get all the cups in the screen. That we way. like it when you fill the screen. Top Gun 2, more quasi-homoerotic scenes with self-enduring sex with loose women and flying like an asshole. You know what? It's okay to have... Full on homoerotica now. It's acceptable. And yeah, actually, cool, if they're smart, well, yeah. they will totally have a gay guy in there. Firefox. That was another great movie. Oh, this, and a great book as well. That's what's Firefox Down. Yeah. Yeah. This, this reminds me of uh, Remember Blue Thunder, the television show with the helicopter. I'm out a bit, Bob. <laughs> not, only do I rem- not only do I remember Blue Thunder, Travis. With they've been showing it on one of the retro TV channels in this country, and I've been taping them all along with Airwolf and Streethawk. Airwolf, uh, right. yes. Streethawk, yeah. <laughs> Streethawk, didn't they have a, one of our 80s black guys with the shaved head? Uh, wasn't that the one I'm thinking of? He, I, I don't know actor's name. Um, yeah, it'll come to me in a minute. Yeah. It's a long time since I watched it, and nostalgia. I saw it pop up, and I, they were showing it right from episode one. So I was like, I've got to record that. Bob takes the lead with eight seventy seven. So I'm out of bits. Look at him splash that cup. Mm-hmm. Oh, look at it going yeah. everywhere. There it is. Uh, I worked in a theater when Blue Thunder came out. Well, Blue Thunder was a television show. Did they do a movie and then a TV show? It, after? it was originally was. a movie, and then it was, yeah, a, it was a movie yeah. first. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yep. it's uh, and the TV show, you know, a helicopter. No, that was Airwolf with the helicopter that was mm-hmm. really silent. Or Blue Thunder did it too, but yeah, there's no such thing as a silent helicopter. That was a wonderful piece of Hollywood. <laughs> that it would never work. Or Airwolf. No, no. Once, once, I mean, even if we get into well, until we finally figure out how to use magnetic propulsion, we will not have a silent aircraft. That's that. Okay, who else has birthdays, Ed? Uh, other birthdays. Uh, July 4th, 1862, the father of American music, Stephen fucking Foster. Hmm. I don't hear him on the radio anymore. Now you don't hear him no more. <laughs> Campton lady, sing this song. Do that. Mm-hmm. I hear him on, mm-hmm. hear him on Blazing mm-hmm. Saddles. Yeah. <laughs> Blazing Saddles is... If you ever seen uh, what you saw, Tombstone, Stephen fucking Foster, it's a line from the movie. Uh-huh. Okay. July 6th, mm-hmm. 1961, after Jeffrey Rush. Oh, I like him. He's fun. It's in, in July. Chuck, Chuck says, we'll never have a silent craft as long as we have atmosphere. True. Unless, True. you know, even, and then uh, Kennedy says balloons are aircraft, but they still... Make a noise when you fire well, the. No, st- strictly speaking, I, I challenge that because surely an aircraft makes its passage through air by means of man made propulsion, whereas the balloon is propelled by the actual wind itself. And just Which is why you flight. cannot, you can't steer a balloon in any direction. You can't fly a balloon against the wind. You can fly an aircraft anywhere. Yeah, even dirigibles make a noise with their propellers and whatnot as they tear through the air. So. But. Remember, supersonic, you think they're two miles behind where they are. <laughs> so they're dropping bombs before you realize they're above you. Okay, go on. Okay. July 6, 1979, actor comedian Kevin Hart. <laughs> 39? Oh my god. <laughs> and July 7, 1940, Ringo Starr. 
Is he still around? He, I didn't see a death date when I looked at birthdays today. So he, he must be he's still around. around. He's still around. The last few years, and I still like him in Caveman. Yeah. Caveman, Dennis Quaid, Shelley Long, Rizzo Star, John Matuzak. That's just a fun damn movie. Tall drink of water that Kevin Hart. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> More like a short cup of dark coffee. <laughs> and Kennedy personal birthday with your aircraft definition. Uh, go on. Personal birthday shout outs. Uh, one of my homies from back in the old hood, uh, Doyle Dunn. And the sweet and lovely Britain. I love you, Brittany. Miss you, sweetie. Come see me sometime. Uh, that's my goddaughter. Stop thinking those thoughts, people. Uh, fellow security specialist Terrence Watson and feb- fellow rebel, well, dark colored rebel, that is, John Smith Jr. Happy birthday, everybody. There you go. And do we want to mention Jamin this week or next week? Yeah, this week, next week, earlier in the day. Toast. Again. We'll toast him again. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Be happy to. Well, Happy birthday, toasting. Jamin. Yeah, buddy. Happy birthday. Grab that, Fosters. I'm going to need another one. We go into our break here in 15 minutes, as we did our. Stephen fucking Foster. What? Oh yeah. Okay. And I, I, yeah. What? Yeah, I'm. I'm finally through that. Finally, it is through that. Through what? All the history and. Stuff. Oh okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I got a weekend story to tell. I oh. usually don't have anything exciting over the weekend, but I got a weekend story to share this week. Go ahead, man. Because as everybody knows, I've been working on my house for the last uh, fucking year. I'm uh, almost finished. Almost, almost finished. Um, I have a shed at the top of my driveway. Faces my driveway. I'm working on the table saw this past weekend. Right in front of the shed. Off to the right side of my shed, I have a wood shed. It's just a little shelter I built to keep my wood dry. I need a big shelter I built to keep my wood dry. <laughs> Left right now. Sorry. Um, but I'm out there. I'm working on the table saw, and I get this feeling. Always trust your sixth sense that I'm not alone. So I, I just keep on pausing, looking around. It's taking me three times longer than usual to get this fucking trim made. Yeah, it does. Get the first batch made. Get the first batch made, bring it in the house, go back out, start on the second batch. I still got a feeling I'm not fucking alone. But I get that made. I pick up the little trim pieces that I just dropped on the ground there, and I walk up around the corner of my woodshed to toss them in front of the woodshed, which is half empty. A fucking black bear jumps up and runs out of the fucking woodshed just as I toss him in front of the woodshed. So I came in, emptied the shit out of my pants, and had a good weekend after that. Ed has a history of black bears. I once went camping with him, and there's this, we, we see a Little black cub. bear off in the distance as we're walking yeah. through the trails. And... It, we see it three, four times, and we stop and take pictures and whatnot. And then as we go on, we're getting towards the end of the trail, back into the camping area. And there's cups. Oh, cups. Two, yeah. two cups. And they're playing on the tree and whatnot. And we're like – we ask a sensible question. And we are staying you know, 100, 150 feet back. We're not leaving the trail. We're taking yeah, and I'm pictures. standing on the trail. Mama's got to be around here somewhere. Yeah, our Mama's got to be here. And Travis goes – yeah, quietly. Just, I'm like, Travis? behind you, Ed. Behind me. And, and there's <clears throat> the mama bear on the path. And she starts not galloping, just a, a light trot. A little you know, trot. A little jog up the trail. Right toward my black ass. <laughs> <laughs> and I got pictures. enough to give me a slight trot. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, so there we go. We uh, we had that. And and all she wanted to make sure we weren't fucking with the cup. She weren't. Wasn't it's, just, it's one of the things I envy you Americans is your amazing access to this wonderful wildlife. If I go for a walk through the British countryside, I've got nothing more to worry about than a slightly irritable badger. Which are much more friendly <laughs> than American badgers. <laughs> well, I shouldn't say friendly, Maybe a, less aggressive. How about that? Slightly antisocial hedgehog. But... Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, let's see here. What do we got? Some comments. Can I also <laughs> add that, when, Ed, when you first started telling that story, I completely misheard you, and I could have sworn the first sentence you said was, I have a shit at the top of my driveway. 
Shit. Shit. <laughs> I was thinking, yeah, he's in the middle of the woods. No one's going to care, frankly. <laughs> that, I would if I can that's get That's further back up on the hill. <laughs> yeah, black bears don't mess with brothers. Um, okay. I, I just want to mention this because Kennedy's like, so if it was a polar bear, you wouldn't be scared, right? Actually, I would be scared if it was a polar bear because polar bears okay. like seals and black people look like seals standing up. So I'd be uh -huh. scared to death. I'm like, polar bear. I said, is it because polar bears are white? He wouldn't be scared. Mm -hmm. <laughs> polar bear would just <laughs> his wallet and leave. <laughs> Man, I don't think we're going to have a problem with polar bears here anytime soon. It's uh, nah, I don't think so. I hope not. They're, they're they're looking for places further north at this point in time. And uh, in answer to Funky Punk's comment about uh, is that a swallow with a coconut? Is that an African or European swallow? <laughs> <laughs> Very different from a white girl swallow. <laughs> it's, uh, Black Seal Special Ops. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a quick birthday shout out if I can. I know we skip past that, but just to slide one in there before we reach the hour segue. Uh, ben Johnson. Ben was the head of my door staff at my old pub, The King Lad. And he is simultaneously one of the biggest, most cuddly blokes I know and one of the hardest bastards I've ever met. I think it's great that uh, you he, cuddle your staff when they're hard. I, <laughs> I, I've cuddled Ben, I've helped him up off the floor, I've helped him put people on the floor, I saved the guy's life with him once, he's an absolute amazing guy. He, if you were running a pub or any kind of venue where you needed door stuff, you genuinely couldn't ask for a nicer guy than Ben on your right hand. Kevin, you got he is, he is all smiles, all welcome, he is everybody's favourite guy right up until the moment where you cross the line and he will drop you like a sack of shit. He's got the roadhouse rule from Patrick Swayze. You be nice. Oh, yeah. When they're a dick, you be nice. And you continue to be nice until it's time to not be nice. Just not to be nice. And uh, Kennedy's got a request of you. Oh, yeah? Hang on. By I'm the way, yes, flinging honey across. Badger. Honey badger is great there, Victoria. Non my great. Honey badger don't give a shit. Oh, oh sorry. Hold on. Say it again without the answer. Sorry. Non migratory. <laughs> Instead of migratory. It is my favorite color. <laughs> Pink. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't he a Canadian that ran faster than a bear, Ben Johnson? <laughs> I, think it, I remember Grizzly Adams. I've run across plenty of... I can run fast. Oh, go ahead. I can run faster when I'm bear. <clears throat> <laughs> That's right. More streamlined. Well, mostly, except for that one thing. Uh, by the way, Chuck, I don't get the get in your rocket and fuck off back to Lego Legoland, you cunt. Is that a lot of the Lego movie? <laughs> yeah. Kennedy cheered for the Python. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. <laughs> Javen's run across. It's, um, sorry, just to interject before we get past it, to anyone who didn't recognize that, it's actually a quote from the Simon Pegg movie, The World's End. Oh, okay. But you have have it. Film. I, I do have that movie. I just haven't watched it. I saw it. It's a fun movie. Um, mm -hmm. It's not as fun as Shaun of the Dead and <laughs> Hot Fuzz. Um, Actually, uh, Kennedy being a, a nudist, I have been in the woods many times with a bear behind. <laughs> it's a black bear behind. I'm gonna eyes. read Jamin's comment here, so hush, Kevin. <laughs> I've run across plenty of black bears while riding horseback. It freaked my horse out the first time. Now continue, Kevin. I you, you interjected twice while reading that, so I'm harassing you. Imagine Kevin's wood with a bear behind. Is that wrong? World's End is great. Uh, hey, let's go into another break. So I can. Uh, I think I'm gonna go with a Pacifico. Next, after my fosters, keeping with the international beer theme. Um, so, black bear down. You know where fosters is brewed, right? Uh, I don't know. Probably Wisconsin. That stereotypical Australianly marketed beer that's brewed here in the UK. Is it? It's I can mm -hmm. read the can if you want me to read your can. If you know what I mean. 
<laughs> you can look at my cans anytime you like. Sweet. Hey, Victoria, that's your setup. <laughs> Knock that down. I was going to say, right yeah, waiting for the next Victoria comment now. There we go. Okay, we'll be right back, guys. We're getting toasted at Talk of the Tavern! Talk of the Tavern! Yeah, you're always welcome. Good morning, Talk of the Tavern. It's 6 a.m. from Mineral Wells, and I'm hoping you're getting toasted. Because I'm not. Hi guys, this is Angela Pritchett of Angela Plays Ukulele on YouTube, and you're watching Talk of the Tavern. Hey, Hi. it's Elizabeth from New York, and we're getting toasted on Talk, Talk of, of the, the Tavern. Tavern. Yeah! Hi, this is Syrinx. This is Wednesday. This is Morning. And we're Charming <laughs> Underclothes. And we're getting toasted on Talk, Talk of the, the Tavern. Tavern. Say, um, uh, this is Bertie, Ayla, <laughs> and Baisley, and we are here getting toasted uh, on top of the tavern. Top of the tavern? Uh, yeah, Travis asked me about this. Oh. And, uh, Hi, Travis. Hi, Andrea. Miss you. We're really getting tested. <laughs> this is Morbin Moeller of Dream Punk Press coming at you from the strolling colon. Hoping you're getting toasted at Talk of the Tavern. Oh, hey, I'm Joe. And I'm Nick from Instant Replay Live. And you're watching Talk of the Tavern. Yeah. Hi, I'm Richie Munster, and we're getting toasted at... Ah! Hi, I'm Captain Felina. I'm T Strange. A feline and strange. Feline and strange! Thanks, Chief. And we're getting toasted at. Talk of the Tavern! This is Jenny from Sweden, and we've been enjoying a lovely weekend at the Cogs Expo, and we're getting toasted at. Talk of the Tavern! This is Joe Kennedy, also known as Ruffhead, and I'm being toasted on Talk of the Tavern at my favorite intersection in New York City, where broad meets fever. Hello, it's Morvan Moeller of Dream Punk Press coming at you from Quixotic Arts in Norfolk, Virginia, hoping you're getting toasted at Talk of the Tavern. Hi, I'm Elizabeth. I'm Ariella. I'm Crystal. I'm Don. And we're at the Queen's Pride Parade, and we're getting toasted on I'm Talk of the Tavern. Tavern. Woo! <laughs> Hi, I'm Matricula, the Nerd Campfire Music Cloud, and you're watching Talk in the Tavern. Hi there. This is author R.S. Belcher. I'm not wearing any pants. And you are watching Talk of the Tavern. Hello, friends. You are now watching Talk of the Tavern. Did you scuffle, boss? Enjoy. Hey, everybody. This is Talkin' Toey. And when I'm not saving the farm from aliens, I'm getting toasted on Talk at the Tavern. Hi, I'm Jack Burbrett with the Dots RPG Project, and you're watching Talk of the Tavern. And you're watching Talk of the Tavern. <laughs> <laughs> we are Nightwatch Paradox, and we are being toasted on... The Talk of the Tavern! Hey there, this is Ray Daffer. Time for the roll call for our late night, inappropriate, slightly intoxicated, and very naughty music hour. This is where the faint of heart swoon, parents put children to bed, and things heat up and get steamy. So pour another drink and strap yourself in. It's gonna be a bumpy ride. It is third hour roll call. Let us know that you're still here, what you're drinking. Put Travis to bed. He scares 
easy. Oh, yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. Um, by the way, my foster brewed in the USA with U.S. and imported ingredients. This is a great <laughs> alternative here, straight from Fort Worth, Texas. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, a great Australian brew brewed about 10 miles from wherever you buy it. Something like that, because Texas is 10 miles from everything. Ten, yeah, everything in America is 10 miles away, surely. And I want to open it's not that bigger country. the third hour and talk about toilets. Oh, by the way, I'm drinking a Pacifico now. That's, that's my next one, okay. which is brewed in Mexico. So toilets. Gentlemen, uh -huh. this is for you. Something I've realized is now in the there's all kinds of toilets of course but you have two basic shapes you have your rounder shape and then you have your oblong shape and something i've noticed when you've had your johnson tucked in your pants for a while the oblong ones are so much better than the round ones because the round those extra three inches makes a difference the extra couple of inches in the oblong that's what she ones, said yeah absolutely it's women are like why are you always peeing down the front of the toilet the oblong ones, you have a much less chance because when you first whip it out, when it's been cuddled in your drawers all day long, sometimes it's a little crimped and it sprays in multiple directions. And that oblong toilet really helps with that down spray that you don't even see because your your schlong is in the way. It's uh, here's the oblong toilets. Okay. Okay. Here's the countries that have oblong toilets. <laughs> Just a, and for any of you guys who don't have one, just, just stretch that little guy out a little bit before you whiz, and that usually clears up any kind of, you know. Listen, we may listen. Have, oh, go ahead, Andrea. We may have oblong toilets, but the doors are only this big. Oh, well, that's public restrooms. I'm talking about in the house here. My doors. Yes, I know. Whatever. Here's the thing, guys. Don't be ashamed. You ain't going to lose your manhood. Sit your ass down, Okay. My daddy taught me when I was a kid, boy, you ain't got no damn sights on that thing. You need to be sitting your ass down. But I'm willing to bet we can Google and find sights you could put on your penis. Probably. But Ed is sitting in the other room. That's the difference. Well, you know, because when it's around corners and stuff, you know, so Hard to find. sit down. I have, a, I have a friend who has a dartboard painted in the bottom of his toilet bowl. Yeah, nice. and, and by the way, uh, Chuck, comments are very delayed. Make the responses much less funny. Well, keep in mind, we also have time before we notice it and read it out loud. But we actually have some of the shortest delay you'll find. Um, and it depends. It matters if you're watching it on your computer versus your phone or tablet and also how good your Wi-Fi is. So every once in a while, like we're in a refill break. Or if we care to read it. That's true. If we give a damn what the fuck you say. Um but when we're in a refill break, take a moment and hit refresh, and usually it'll cut it down by two or three seconds at least. I notice this when, when gathering bits from other people's channels. Um, I'll sometimes bring up a, a multiple of their channel, and it'll be three to five seconds difference. Yeah. Kev? I was just um, one, since it's the third hour, I'm wondering, Victoria's comment, my popcorn has just finished popping. Are you genuinely making popcorn, or is that a euphemism? Mm. Nice. And John is drinking Monster. Kennedy has dog he Dogfish Head 90. Uh, Chuck is, I, I guess, drinking Australian beer from Texas, like me. Um, Kennedy says, guys, proud they can hit a deer at 400 yards, miss the toilet at 20 inches. <laughs> well, for some people, it's 20 inches. For other people, it's, damn, this water's cold. Uh, <laughs> God forbid you try pissing without holding it shit goes everywhere you know what if you try to piss without holding it and your shit goes everywhere you really need to be sitting your ass down yeah you, you really talk to a to doctor yeah <laughs> <laughs> that happens when you get older i hear but i'm not quite to that point yet why are short guys the worst at hitting the fucking toilet are they really did you do a survey on this I, I, no, well, informal. I do have a home. People come visit me. Right. Okay, and I've noticed after after a short guy is in the bathroom. I think I can answer that. Worst. It's like you're closer than anybody. You know. I, but, I, I can as a guy who's six or eight head, I can answer that for you now. It's because us tall guys have had to spend our entire fucking life working on our own. 
<laughs> Short guys, they're like, yeah, I've got this. It's no and, problem. And, you know? and no, Travis, it's not you. I get a visitor <laughs> here every now and then. It's much, much shorter than you. <laughs> you know, but the other thing is, it, wherever you're pissing, public restroom, your own, or a friend's house, there's toilet paper right there. You drip on the bowl, wipe the goddamn bowl. You, you yeah, it's my house. You're not marking your fucking terror. You know, if, if you're hitting your shins, fucking wipe that up. And hit the floor, too, because you know you hit your goddamn knees, you hit the floor. <laughs> and we have some great answers over here. Uh, damn, this water's cold. Still missed. Shit. Chuck says lower trajectory and fluid dynamics. I love that he went scientific with this shit. Um... No comment about the giant Foster's piss beer. Oh, whatever. What? <laughs> Welcome to talk of the time. <laughs> <laughs> I want Brad Williams to be on tonight. I figure Brad Williams should be like, you know, when you're level with the bowl, you've got no excuse. But yeah, seriously, you take it, you pull on it a few times before and after, you're going to clear the pipes a little. And yeah, come on, guys. Or as Ed said, just sit down. Just sit down. You know, and, and leave the phone out of the bathroom so you're not in there 20 minutes. Unless you're jerking off, then please take your phone and take 20 minutes. Because it takes that long to find the porn and eight seconds later you're... Or, or if you're a woman, because without women taking phones into the bathroom, I wouldn't have saved up nearly enough toilet selfies from my friend Sarah to make her a 365 page calendar for next year. <laughs> I believe I'm, not, I'm not even kidding. Since she started sending them to me, I've saved every toilet selfie she's ever sent me and I'm, I'm up to about 350 odd now. By the end of this year, I'll have enough to make a calendar for next year. Hopefully she won't watch this and I haven't just ruined her birthday surprise for next year. <laughs> Welcome to Talk of the Toilet. Victoria, I'm sure you have. And Vic, Yeah, Victoria says, welcome to Talk of the Toilet, and that she's cleared a pipe. Uh, Ken mm. says, I, he does have a skit on the short urinal. Yes, he does. Um, and, and actually, even before I heard his, I had one on that. I have thought about doing – I've had friends for years go, Travis, you should do stand-up. I don't think I'm that funny. They did. And I've thought about doing an hour-long stream on Twitch, not in the bathroom, and, and do – Stand up. I, I don't know. I haven't decided. Welcome to Talk at the Toilet where the tavern goes downhill fast. We go down the tubes, buddy. <laughs> Chuck, I'm glad you stopped in, man. I wish more of the fat boys. And what the fuck happened to the fat boys? David left the fat boys Facebook group, which, by the way, I, he was one of the guys that I pissed off on a regular basis with my sense of humor. So I'm, I'm just saying, you know, it's, uh, yeah, it's, and no more certain things, and they stopped the Facebook chat message group. What the fuck? I guess they stopped it. I don't know. They never invited me back after I left at 2 in the morning. <laughs> yeah. my... Well, no, I left at 2 in the morning. I got three video chat calls in a row from one of the guys, and I just left the group because instead of just sending out the call, if somebody sees it, they join, he made it ring like I did that one time when you were having sex, Ed. Um, but this is 2 a.m. Um, so I left the fucking group and I told him I left for this reason. You could bring me back in and nobody brought me back in. So I, I guess it doesn't exist anymore. I don't fucking know. Uh, it, it's almost as annoying as having to put your phone on private mode every night when you go to bed. You know, because otherwise you get woken up at like five o'clock in the morning by all your American friends messaging each other. Okay, sorry, Kevin. <laughs> no offense. It's fine. One flick of the button and you guys are silent for hours. Yeah, it's great. Normally, I, I it's a bit do. Like put Victoria it... is just the same. Yeah, it's uh, a long, an hour long stream. One flick of the button keeps her quiet for hours. <laughs> or makes her noisy for hours. Makes her noisy for hours. Uh, it depends how tightly fitting the gag is. <laughs> Oh, you want to see an hour-long stream in the toilet? I could I could create a stand-up comedy routine called Toilet Humor and just film the whole goddamn thing in the bathroom. That could happen. Um, Chuck says, used to have a D&D... &D, used to use D&D. &D, the Facebook chat is annoying when there's a video call. Yeah, well, the thing is, when there's a video call, you have a choice of ringing everybody's phone or not. Um... 
And when you say D and D, I don't. But D and D is Dungeons and Dragons to me. Do you need a game? We might be able to. Oh, do not disturb. I was about to invite you into a D and D game. I'd put you in. You've got a filthy sense of humor. I, I think you'd have a good time on our superhero tabletop role playing that we stream. I'm waiting for Andrea, but nothing. Oh. I, I was on I was on mute. I had to find the button. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's on my channel. Everybody go go follow it. I need fifty followers. Totally didn't mean to pimp her channel, but it works. Huh? I totally didn't mean to pimp your channel. Um and and Kennedy oh. Dez is not here, but Kennedy, we're still looking at doing a game where we could bring you in. It'd be every other Sunday probably. But I just got a brand new job where I think weekends are gonna be me working you know essentially 12 hours from noon to midnight so, uh, part-timer pretty much it, it is a part-time um you know so, and that includes drive time back and forth so oh i work 15 hour days not including my travel time you chose that don't cry I'm not crying. Well, shut up. I'm just saying, don't, oh my don't be coming in here waving your 12 hours, including driving time around, like it makes you special. <laughs> <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons, I thought they were all playing dicks and dildos. Oh, man. No, that's a totally different game. We uh, get together with Victoria to play that. Why is it quiet after yeah, that? Why is there no our, comment? She's our, I was just going to say, she's our DM. Our dominatrix mistress. Mm. <laughs> what is the problem with being pussy whipped? When guys mock other guys for being pussy whipped, I'm like, so you've got a pussy at home that makes you happy and you do what it wants you to do? Where is the fucking problem in that shit? It's a jealousy thing, man. It could be. It could yeah. be. Um, you know, it's uh, if that's what people enjoy, and you know what? Man, always in charge. You know what? Let the woman be in charge. Go ahead. Have a good time. If that's how it works for you, go to it. I'm, I'm happy for the woman to be in charge. I spend 15 hours a day being the guy who does all the work. You know what? How many times are you going to cry about that? I'm uh, cry on oh, I'm not Never. crying about it. Oh, I, I don't want to harp on or anything. No, you're okay, man. I'm totally teasing you. Absolutely, I get it. You, you, I've made that comment before when you're not around because you're busy working instead of coming on the show or hanging out. Um, yeah, isn't it funny that Kevin is the one that financially is doing the best of of us, and that's because mm -hmm. he's fucking working like a goddamn dog. Um, Dogs get better working conditions. They don't get trapped in the heat for too long before people start kicking off. Oh, there was a. Can I just say, by the way, I know I know Americans have no sympathy for us, and when it comes to this subject, we've been over this so many times. But frankly, fuck the British heat wave at the moment. Mm -hmm. Someone yeah, made a very good point actually the other day that I'd never considered, right? And that, that I know we've talked about how what we consider to be a hot temperature really isn't a hot temperature for you guys. Sure. And bear in mind, you're talking about an entire country that doesn't have AC. Right. Right. Unless you work in a big, big office. Mm -hmm. But homes don't have AC. Public buildings don't have AC. And it's twice our normal temperature at the moment. So, so it's we, twice the temperature we live in for nine, ten months of the year. Right. So when you're at 90 degrees Fahrenheit, not Celsius, hopefully never Celsius, um, <laughs> yeah, it, it, you're fucking melting. I get it. Yeah. Um, and by the way, I want to read a few comments here. Uh, Chuck saying you don't want to sleep around, poor bastard, lol. Also says single mentality for a lot of men. Countess says whip smart bitches. And I have a 10-foot bullwhip. I had to buy a new one because I've managed to lose one in my 600-square-foot apartment. <laughs> no, you just hate that. Mm. Mind you, that's going to be an interesting find when you forget about it and you come to packing in future years. Or when a when an in law's over or a friend's over and they're like, oh, I can but send I can... you mine, Victoria. Yeah, I think I have two. You do. You've been holding out on me. <laughs> People throwing rings in her yard. And Kennedy says my Indian coworkers laughed at ninety-five degrees New York City, about thirty-six Celsius. Um. Yeah, heat is relative, and you got to realize what people mm. are used to. It's just like when we had an earthquake in Virginia, 
that was uh, 4.6, 4.8, something like that. And California was like, ha, 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 that's nothing. No, it is something when you don't have shit set up for that kind of earthquake. It's huge. Yeah. Um, and when people, when we have one centered in Virginia and people in New York and Pennsylvania felt it, no, that's something, guys. You know, it's relative. And, yeah, you could cry, oh, and compare dick size. We've got bigger, badder temperatures, earthquakes, whatever. But, well, not only that, centered in Virginia, just what, 20 miles from a nuclear power plant? Oh, not even. Yeah. It, it was not right even there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, which that one was probably built to earthquake, earthquake code, if I'm not mistaken, because we do. Oh, Ed, I don't think I talked about this last week on the show. They, and I posted the article to my Facebook. They have lined a, I'm going to have to pull it up. They've lined something with graphite. You know how I'm always going on about graphite ah, and graphite? You're like graphite. And, they have, uh-huh. yeah, and they've made a nuclear uh, accelerator like 10 times more effective, which mm. means it generates power quicker, cheaper, easier, more. And it's like, yeah. In a much larger explosion? Uh, You know, I, th- I would assume it'd be the same. But maybe not. I don't know. But how many, you know, compared to other? Uh, oh, what do we got here? Look, I'm going to avoid your question and go over here because I don't know the answer. Uh, I, I just keep hearing Devo playing in my head, reading the comments here. <laughs> with, with Devo, a whip it, yeah. Um, I want a flower pot hat. <laughs> see, that'd be great. Andrea, I'm just so picturing you at TeslaCon with the hat thing, you know, with like a four foot tall hat, and you'd still lose to somebody as, a, you know, four foot wide, four <laughs> foot tall. Um, Kennedy says 95 and being in the subway platform isn't fun. Chuck says heat is relative. Ask someone who sleeps with cadavers. Dark humor. <laughs> but funny. Kevin says I have a friend who works a bullwhip into his fire act. He uses it to whip cigarettes from volunteers' mouths. Yep. I've seen that. That is uh, quite a skill set. Yeah, he practices with um, empty glass bottles in his backyard. How? What do you mean? Oh, I just... He he has has uh, about four and a half, five foot high decorative wall, so he just puts two house bricks with the bottle in sideways like that. And then he'll put the lit cigarette into the end, gotcha. into the neck of the glass bottle as though it's the, the mouth of the volunteer. He practices whipping out the cigarette without disturbing the bottle. Gotcha. Andrew, what were you took him say? took him months to get accurate all the time with it. But. You, you talk of whips and cigarettes and weird stuff like that. I just remembered. Um, I think Greg Chapman just had a birthday. He did, and a wedding, mm. and we're going to have That's him on Thursday. He, yes. Yeah, um, you know. Kevin, if you're available, or Ed, if you're available, you guys are welcome to jump in for all or part of it and say hello to Greg. I I just want to... I think... Hang on. Let me... I've got my schedule here. Let me check. Well, the bottom line is, I just want to let folks know about what he's doing, because he's doing educational things as well as fun things. Um, He is like one of those creative people that's always doing the next thing, and I appreciate that and love that. And... Um, you know, I've actually thought about moving all of our weekday shows to this time slot because we just seem to get more people later. The phone's mm. getting hot because you're touching, Victoria. What time are you on on Thursday, in, Travis? In UK hours, uh, we're yeah, three to six, so eight to eleven, your time. Yeah, I'm gonna miss you. I'm afraid. Okay. No, I'm not Thursday. Yeah. Okay. Just letting you know. As always, you guys are both welcome anytime. Um, but uh, I have put off, because of the new job situation, I've put off bringing in and scheduling more guests because I needed to know that I'm going to, with a sleep schedule, handle it. And now it looks like the this job will be Friday through Sunday, three doubles, three doubles for them, which are like six-hour shifts, so 12-hour shifts, not bad at all. Part-timer, as Kevin said. Um, which, which is absolutely true. I, I agree with that. But I love a 12-hour shift. I'd rather work one twelve than two sixes. And that was the sweetest job I ever had. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's uh, to get 36 hours in three days instead of 36 mm -hmm. hours over five or six days. Hell yeah. Let's do that. Um, and so this will cut into some things, but not the talk of the tavern schedule. And I'm still going to try to work out the gaming stuff because I do really enjoy that. Um, oh, look at Elizabeth doing a panoramic. What? Where? On the talk of the tavern. Um, private message group. Oh, see, I didn't get a what, message. Uh, well, just go over there. You'll see it. And look at the faces of the people looking at her like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> That's fabulous. Okay, you have some WTF looks. Except for the black guy in the upper right with the cool hat. He's like, hey, how you doing? <laughs> and, uh, you don't see it? Well, I don't see. Oh, there he is. Pickle man. With the Yankees hat on. <laughs> Good times. Um, That's cute. And I will repeat, Eric just sent me a message reminding everybody, if you want free tickets to TeslaCon, let me know. Drop me a Facebook message. Drop me something so I know who you are, and I'll hand him a list um, with addresses <laughs> and all that good stuff. That uh, was nice of you. Yeah, absolutely. And I know oh, Elizabeth right. says... Let her in the call. Oh, let her in the call? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Let's see what we got here. Let's see what She happens. just messaged me. It's probably better that she messages you than me because you'll see it quicker. Yeah, well, you said that before. It's, uh, and thank you for the congrats on the job, but the bottom line is I'm looking forward to this being the job instead of something else, but it's not right now. So. Oh, she's on the way. Turn your phone sideways for me. Turn it. There you go. Woo! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hello from Nick. For talking yeah. Now, did you do a toasted video there? No, not yet, but I will now, because the sun didn't go down, and I'm trying to get the best angle. Look at those screens. Look how big they are. Let me make that big for a Look nice. at the size of yours. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and there's the fiddle. And then we get out of it. So, Can you see it? Can you oh, see them yeah. playing? Oh, yeah. Good. So who's playing? Nice. Yeah, We're playing somebody. the Braves. Ah. And it uh, looks like we're, it's 3-3 right now. Oh. Uh, oh, hang on. It looks mm -hmm. like it uh, looks like the bottom of the ninth. Looks like oh. we're going into the 10th. Wow. Yeah. Oh. Nice. You'll forgive. Uh, it, it is a sweet and the beer is free. So. Sweet. Yeah. What beer is it? Why am I not there? Oh, oh free beer. It was Budweiser or Miller Lite. Oh. oh. Oh, okay, I'm just fussed now. <laughs> but I just wanted to talk about because talk of the tavern is all the way in New York. And we're at Yankee Stadium, baby. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. A couple of things here from comments. Uh, Chuck says you got huge tracks of oh screens. And, um, <laughs> yeah. So. Kennedy almost went to the game tonight, so you almost had Kennedy there. Oh, Wait, wow. I remember his damn kilt pin. This oh, 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 that would have been awesome. Oh, we're getting bits. We are getting oh, bits. Yeah. Skipper and Vinyarin and Skipper and Skipper. The and cup is overflowing. A cup overflowing. So, you having a good time out there at the Yankee Stadium? Or are you at Yankee Stadium? We're in Yankee Stadium. I call it a cathedral. It is the Roman Colosseum of modern times. It is. You it see is why wouldn't be able to hide in that light. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And it yeah. raises the temperature. But I didn't... <laughs> I didn't want to take over the show, but I absolutely had to call from the stadium. Absolutely. Because... We love that you did. Yeah. love that you did. It's, uh... Ooh. Lots Ooh. of bits for you there for showing up. 
I'm not. I'm not getting naked. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm getting normal. Couple, couple more. No, but Pickle Man is. Where's Pickle Man? Naked. He's he's under the sea. He's had so much to drink. <laughs> <laughs> he's pickled. He is. He got pickled. Got hey, quick toast to Elizabeth for joining us from Yankee Stadium. Here's to you. Yeah. Cheers. Thank you. They're making it rain bits, as Chuck said. Chuck, you know how to get more bits. You can either purchase or in the chat box, click on the diamond shape and then watch videos, commercials to get them for free. So that way you don't have to spend money to make us a little bit. And uh, Countess says, cheers. Funky Punk says Slauncha. That's Chuck. Slauncha! There you go. Alright. I'm gonna go because uh, I've only got so much data and I gotta make some videos, like I promised. Go enjoy the game. <laughs> Have a good time. We'll talk to you later. Have fun. Hey right, guys, I miss you. Bye. I miss you too. Job. Bye. I got better things to do. <laughs> well, you never know what the might light lead. Hey. <laughs> oh, run. Home run, baby. I can't hang out. It won't let well, me. Well, I'll disconnect you. <laughs> there we go. Um, oh, let's see here. Chuck's got to go whoring for more. Goose Island at Yankee Stadium, $13, says uh, Kennedy. Side job. There we go. Um, and the comments about the job have to do the same, says Countess, probably starting a new day job in three to four weeks. No shame in having a day job to support your art. Absolutely not. It's, uh, there we go. Yeah, like I said earlier about Burger King, whatever you're doing to make that money and bring in the, bring in the personal bits. There's no shame. No shame. It's, uh, I'm only doing this for my kids. Give it a few more years so they get out of university and fuck work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh... This is why when people are like, I want kids, I'm like, so you want a lot of restrictions? Uh, in your life, I'm going to give away all of my worldly possessions and join a commune somewhere. Yeah, it's called Talk of the Tavern. Do we get free love in our commune? Um, Victoria, there's been a request for you to join the talk. <laughs> It'll be free, but it won't be cheap. <laughs> It'll cost you in the long run. <laughs> well, thank God you were blessed and you have a long run. <laughs> That's a home run, baby. Out of the park. There we go. No second base, which I have heard the bases have changed nowadays. First base is getting laid. Second base is they actually call you on the phone, and it goes from there or something. Um. <laughs> First base is someone swiping right. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Or left, whichever it is. Until I've never used it. I think right means they're all right, and left means you left or them. Or grinder before someone makes the comment. Uh, so what else happened this week in history, Ed? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I do love the fact that for the, the last few weeks, we've essentially managed to milk this week in history into the entire second hour of the show. There's nothing wrong with that. John, have a great night. Sorry I didn't get to visit with you today. We'll have breakfast another time, and I still talk to you about your artist down the road. Because, um, like I said, I'm loving the kids' book. So. I will Good night, John. At some point, Good night. Sliding in one direction. Meatloaf. I don't know what the meatloaf comment <clears throat> is. What I miss? Oh, Ooh. yeah, the uh, song uh, with the baseball game. Um, yeah. Uh, Paradise by the Dashboard Light. Mm. Thank you. He's not letting up at all. He's going to try for third. That's right. I've got Otter laying next to me when I stop petting me, like leans over upside down, staring at me. What are you doing? Uh, oh. Milk was invented. This week in history. But by a cow, presumably. 
Well, it could be by any mammal, really, can't it? And thank you to whoever just joined us. Don't forget, if you want to chat, make sure you follow that channel and subscribe. We have lost half our subscribers this month. We're Boo. down to half what we had before. Boo. So, yeah, so don't forget, if you have Twitch Prime, which means you've attached your Amazon Prime account to Twitch, you can can subscribe for free. You can subscribe for free. Support your channel. I was going to say, you have to hit the subscribe button every month. Sometimes people forget to there, go. But there's an icon on the screen. I've that, never had to do that. Really? It, does it no. auto subscribe? Are you subscribed mm -hmm. right now? Yeah. Is it from Twitch Prime? Well, it's through Amazon Prime. I mean, Amazon Prime, that's what I meant. Oh. In the bottom center of the screen, there's a little blue crown when you mouse over it, when you click on it. Um, yeah, there's that. Mm. Uh, Chuck says home base is being lubed up in a green man suit, wearing a furry costume and a gym suit and five randoms in a church during service. Shit is getting so much more complex in the world of bases and effects. <laughs> yeah, I know, I was like. Getting random. Uh, Risotto didn't know the nature of the song, says Kennedy. Um, I have Amazon Prime. We'll check. Have you on Patreon, though? Appreciate that, bud. Absolutely. Uh, Patreon, which, you know what? It's the first of the month. Let's go over to Patreon and let's thank some people. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to have to find that. It's really hard to find the list of names on some of these things. Um, Hey! Hi, Des. There's Des. Hey, Des. Hey, Des. What's up, my brother? Good to see you. How you feeling, man? Um. Oh, you know, man. You know, Elizabeth was on, and I forgot to show her what John sent. From oh, you me did, to didn't you? Give her. It's uh, awesome. And here in the third people hour, with our tried of... and true people, I want to thank... Tammy Quinn for supporting us, as well as John of Jersey's, who just bailed. Uh, Des, thank you for your support there, as well as Tara, who we'll have on Wednesday. Kennedy, who's talking right now. Jeremiah, who's joining us, as well as... Uh, I see his, his screen name here, David. That's his real name. Greg Chapman supports us. Bob, we love you, buddy. As well as... Ethan and Marco for supporting us. You guys on our Patreon make a huge difference every month. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, Craigslist. You guys missed the Craigslist stuff where they, they took away the personals <laughs> on Craigslist for anybody that doesn't know because, frankly, it got too creepy. And they went, you know what? We are not going to we, – we're not responsible. They're personal ads. You put up what you want. But you know what? We're going to take them down so nobody could think we're – what do you see, Des? What yeah, what you see? Um, I'm curious. Doing okay, good. Phil Rizzullo. I don't remember that name. Don't remember who he is, but I remember the name. Play the music award speech is over. Yeah. Um, back page. What is back page? Jurassic World. How was it? God, tell me. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm curious about that one. I want to see it either way, but it might be one of the DVD things instead of catching it in the theater. Uh, Ed, you gonna see it? DVD. Victoria says, I want someone to take me down, damn it. <laughs> Fun, but forgettable. Do you feel that way about the last one with Chris Pratt also? Was that fun and forgettable also? Just so I can have a, a yardstick to measure it by. Do they have mm. meter sticks in the UK, Kev? Meter rulers. I call them meter rulers. Okay. Well. They rule the meter. They do. Oh. Back page was even more random than Craig. Oh, gotcha. Okay. And Chuck says it was a bunch of large hung back dudes in a porno Jurassic world. Oh. Totally not a front for hookers. What? Are we still talking about Jurassic World? Or are we talking about Backpage? I've never heard of Backpage. I, I don't get out much. Victoria has. 
Apparently. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh. oh, Rizzuto was a Hall of Fame shortstop for the Yankees later announcer. Does he announcing on Paradise by the dashboard? Like, oh, Thank okay. You. That's yeah. Okay. I got you. Thanks. Yeah, like I said, I recognize the name, but I couldn't place it. It's. Uh... <clears throat> I wonder if he was on The Simpsons. He was probably on The Simpsons at one point in time. Like, who wasn't? All this toilet humor. Absolutely. Dinosaur's big. Well, for the third hour, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I guess I could talk about what's coming up next week. Um, next week, we well, tomorrow, I think we're going to talk about pipes and cigars. I think that's going to be our base topic for tomorrow's show, um, just because we can. And... Wednesday, we have Tara Moeller joining us to talk about the fairy anthology for MarsCon. Thursday, we have Greg Chapman and his new bride, Flick, joining us. And then we do have the gaming Saturday and Sunday on Andrea's channel. And then next Monday... What is the topic for next Monday? I've got to come over here. I'm going to... You guys get to see my screen. As I switch screens, I, I've moved things around, so here we go. And then I need to bring that back up so you guys don't watch my desktop. No, no, it's no. Oh, handheld movie studio. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll have to see what um, what time my break is on Thursday. If it's while you guys are on air, I might, I've got um, Skype installed on my phone now. I might have to try it at some point when between now and then when you're not hosting the show, just to make sure it works okay for my phone. If it does, I'll try and dial into the show with Greg and Flit. Well, we're in, we're in the last you guys, 25 minutes. You guys minutes can have a right fucking. Now. You guys can. You guys can have a fucking good chuckle because uh, I should obviously be in my work gear, so I'll be in shirt and tie. But. Nice. I tell you what, I'd, uh, I I know I'm dressed like this in the wine shirt right now, but I love at the right time, right place, wearing a shirt and tie. It does add a certain level of class or or comedy to whatever you're doing at that moment, and um, especially a shirt and vest tie optional. It's uh yeah, tie is very much optional in this heat. It's, it's not a good thing to be doing 15 hours wearing a tie in this weather. No. Chuck says saw that desktop from a crime scene on unsolved mysteries. Where were you that night, Travis? I was with you, Chuck. Don't forget. Keep that in mind when they come and ask. Actually, what was that picture? That was a picture that I took, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's a park in Fredericksburg, and that was the middle of winter. Uh, I went and took pictures of it. You, you say shirt and tie doesn't go well if that's all you're wearing. You've never seen me wearing just a shirt and tie. That's true. Wait a and minute. yes, Victoria, for the right price, pictures are available. <laughs> That's right. I've done that before. I went to a nudist formal once and did just wear a tie. Wait just a tie, nice. Just a tie. Wait, wait a split that shirt tail. <laughs> I was going to say, but where did you wear your tie? <laughs> what, was it a dicky bow? <laughs> Careful, still, Andrea, don't spit. Still need a 17-inch <laughs> neck. <laughs> <laughs> uh countess says wear a shirt and tie nothing else uh chuck yes job interview fails oh des wants to know if it costs two quid kev then is uh, i'll i'll add for him is that in bits or cash yeah if it's real cash then yeah message me we'll sort something out <laughs> No, I didn't wear it like a tail. It was actually a bow tie. Nice. <laughs> oh. I'll, I'll quite happily do almost anything but cold hard cash at the moment because I'm saving up some new ink. So. Just message him and I'll give him his, give you his PayPal account. Oh, yeah. Two quid is two quid. Yeah, have a that's it. It's a start, man. I need about 250 for the next piece, so. Oh, well, the conversation is stone dead. Yeah. Well, no, Kennedy says I have to wear a suit in 95 degree plus on the 4.5 <clears> subway, <throat> and I always had to wait at least two trains, and the platform was two levels down, carried suit, wore t-shirt, and shorts to the job. See, that's not necessarily a bad thing to do. 
It's uh, standing outside the building, put it on pants over your shorts. <laughs> oh, he wasn't putting it on over. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I, I'm, I get the feeling if I'm going to expect Ocon that I'm going to bring my kilts with me. Because since they're a Scottish-based school, even though it's not a tartan, they're a Tequila kilts. Chuck says, did you get that Chuck Norris riding a unicorn tent? Well, I was just writing a response, but I'll answer that then. Yes, I did. Uh, the difficult bit was uh, accurately depicting how he was riding that unicorn. But... <laughs> Side saddle, front, straight on the horn. It, it, it's a little known fact, it was Chuck Norris who first gave the unicorn to the horn. That's right. He just held the hip and thrust it. Pop! Up it came. And by up it came, I mean up it came. It's uh, balls deep. That's right. Unicorns need love, too. And besides, when you pull out, you just got rainbow on your dick. It's okay. And no, rather imaginatively, it's going to be another dragon. Because all of my tattoos are dragons. There we go. His last tattoo well, when he's all, 87 all, years old except, be a dragon hunter. All except that one. That's the only one I've got that's not a dragon. There you go. Yeah, I'm looking forward to being able to get more ink and complete what I have going on. and All the time. An angry dragon. He's going to have that one coming out of his butt crack. It'll be a tramp stamp straight out of the butt crack. Look very angry. <laughs> Shitty attitude. <laughs> hey, did you get new ink? I know you're talking. I have, I've gotten no new ink in years. Teresa still has to get hers finished up first. That's the deal. Okay. Yeah, I, I, this, this is why I've not had any for a while, Ed, because actually I've all my spare cash I've been investing in uh, paying for Emily's current range of <laughs> tattoos. But now she's got more ink than I do, so fuck her. Catch up. It's my oh, turn. You, you do both. Get a tattoo answer. Yeah, this is, this is true and fuck her, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, yeah, it's Paris is awesome now. I, 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 I wish I could post you a photograph of it, but she'd fucking murder me. But hers now goes all the way from just above her right knee, up her right thigh, across her hip, all the way diagonally across up her back and over the top of her left shoulder. Oh, wow. wow. What is that sound of somebody leaving Skype? It, yeah, that was weird. It's, uh, I don't know if Elizabeth is trying to join back or what's going on. Mm -hmm. anyway, Kennedy says, unrelated to tonight, but a question the other day. If Elizabeth wants to stream, I have unlimited data courtesy of City of New York. Kennedy, grab me off air or grab her off air because I don't know how that would work. I don't know if that's signing into an app or what, but it's something <coughs> we could discuss it. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's uh. Mm. Good times, though. It's a. Uh... And by the way, I want to thank everybody, <laughs> really, pretty much everybody in chat right now for your help with that Kickstarter. It has funded last Friday. Thank you, guys. We'll be rolling forward with that. It's just a matter of getting the artist with the art done. I'll be publishing the books without art that only has a cover as soon as they're done with the editor and getting everybody their rewards out. But some of these rewards are going to be based on getting the other books published first. So that's why they have like an October release date or whatever for those rewards. Um, but I appreciate that, and I am so glad to be able to quit pushing it. It's I'm so happy to stop asking for money is what it boils down to. To just go ahead and relax and enjoy and the Yanks are an extra inning so Elizabeth might have a late night no doubt, no doubt. It's a, I'll see if she wants to come on tomorrow well, you know speaking of people coming on I'm surprised Daniel's not in the chat that's usually he's around Hey, Jean, Jeanette, good to see you. Are you awake and watching, or are you just watching? It's uh, been a while since we've seen you. I see you lurking, call you out just because we love you. <laughs> it's, uh, <coughs> it's all, all, maybe all, all the American filth has made her shy tonight. That's a possibility. 
And of course it is, you know, almost 2 a.m. there. Wait, five hours, so almost 4 a.m. there. Yeah. So, yeah. Three forty-four a.m. by my clock. So, but we're always glad to see you. And I wonder how uh, Jean Rosnick's doing. Been a while since we've seen her pop in. Mm-hmm. And Ian, you mentioned Ian earlier. Need to get him to come back around. We miss him. It's like he would have had a time tonight. Mm-hmm. Start with steampunk and roll into <laughs> toilets. The other stuff we do. DD, your hammer pull you off. I don't know what that means. Anybody know what that means? Hmm. There we go. Kennedy clarifies, to a non-American, it's often an American. To a Southerner, it's a Northerner. To a Northerner, it's a New Englander. See, I don't bother to divide it up. I just say it's talk at the tavern. Because I have had filthy friends from all over the world. And... Mm. Thor Ragnarok. There you go. Did your hammer just pull you off? Got it. I got it, Chuck. You're okay, man. You clarify. You're good. It's, uh... I still haven't seen uh, uh, the latest Avengers. I did just rewatch Captain America 3, though, Civil War, and enjoyed that. Yeah, I, I haven't seen the latest Avengers, actually. It'll be DVD for us. It's, uh, partially because of budget, partially because Andrew wants to be able to pause and talk during it or not pause and talk oh black it. panther actually think about it that's that's up on i think that's on netflix now is it oh i might have to check that out then i believe so. if not it, oh, yeah. it'll be it'll be on the completely 100 percent legit streaming site i normally use there we go <coughs> uh chuck says use showbox so i guess that's one of those completely legit 100 percent you know Captain America Shield to your kilt pin collection. <laughs> there are a couple of kilts I'd like to get. I, I I mentioned to Ed a week or two ago the one on utkilt.com, which is the police kilt, and it's a tartan, but it's not related to any given clan, and it's you know the police colors. I wouldn't mind having one of those. Um, give Thor's hammer, Black Panther mask, nice. Share the kilt. It's, I only wear kilts in very specific places. Ed is much more free where he wears kilts. Um, and also, since I put on weight, I don't look nearly as good in a kilt. I, I, I'm just too chunky at this point to look good. I, I'd look fucking ridiculous in a kilt. Why? Because it looked like someone had run a kilt up a flagpole. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have the kilt, but then there'd just be this enormous expanse of skinny white leg out of the bottom of it. Like someone had tried to fancy dress a stork <laughs> it's i figure you know i have found with kilts what you're wearing above the kilt makes a huge difference in the look of the kilt oh absolutely yeah um and yeah. to just wear a t-shirt if you're muscle bound or at least fit you look great if you've got my there was a great... wonderful weeble wobble shape it's not so great what were you saying Kevin? there was a there was a great article that i saw in the press mm-hmm. earlier today the british press about a building site of workers and they were objecting because in the current extremely hot temperatures well extremely hot for britain uh their company banned them from wearing shorts really Uh, but they looked into the company's policies and they realized that due to their uh equal opportunities employment act there was no such rule banning the wearing of dresses or skirts so this whole troop of 30 builders all turned up for work wearing their normal work gear and then either in mini skirts or summer dresses and there was nothing their bosses could do about it because there was nothing saying men couldn't come to work in women's clothing nice that's great i need i'm just i'm just hoping not too many of those guys were working on ladders Uh uh-huh it's i have a we got any leather workers listening I need a wand sheath, a leather wand sheath that just holds a, you know, essentially a, a quarter inch dowel that I could put my wand in. <laughs> yeah, this sounds really dirty, I know. Uh, Chuck had to add a kilt to my kilt streaking. is not acceptable at church. Um, Kenny says I lost weight and both my kilts need to be belted well. Yeah. 
that's okay. I think a belt makes a kilt look better, no matter what your body type Best, is. Message to Victoria, yeah. she likes belt open things. <laughs> Get a longer kilt, Dirk Diggler. Um, he was a porn star that Marky Mark played. I'm sorry, Mark Wahlberg played. Just saying. That was, that was a good movie, actually. I really enjoyed that. It, is that what what movie it was, was that? Good. It's uh, oh, I'm trying to think of the name of it now. Don't remember. They'll come to me in a boogie nights. Boogie nights, never. Yeah. Boogie nights. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I remember now. Oh. It's a terrible movie, but it has the best music of the era in it. It's okay, just so, so good. Get the soundtrack, not the DVD. <laughs> there, there's a brilliant album on YouTube, which is in my um, in my frequently watched or watch later list. I can't remember which one. Um, which is an album of 70s porno music called Porno Sonic, which is introduced by Ron Jeremy. Nice. He'd be a good one to have on the show. That'd be a great one. It's, uh, I, I tell you what, I pick up soundtracks like uh, the soundtrack to Guardians of the Galaxy or Starsky and Hutch, the, the most recent movie, um, because it's some of the fun music from that era. And I pick those up. and Or Deadpool. Has some great 70s and 80s music. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so I'll pick those up because a good soundtrack to write to, but also then it has the lyrical music. What are you covering up there, Andrea? What you yawning or? It was yawning. I just say I don't use yeah. the porno sonic music for uh, hanky panky time. Contrary to uh, your belief, there I normally prefer a screaming Norwegian black death metal. Nice. Not because it fits the mood, it just stops her falling asleep halfway through. <laughs> <laughs> and it has to be Norwegian? Yeah, you know, make it too understandable. <laughs> Besides, those guys take black metal fucking seriously. Yeah. Like, there was a, a whole thing uh, about a decade ago where several black me- Norwegian black metal band leaders were imprisoned for killing each other, burning churches, all sorts of stuff. Well, these guys take that shit really seriously. Thank you, Skipper. Um... By the way, the link, two things up there, a couple things up. Um, you're going to see the newsletter that I didn't actually send out this week. I got wrapped up with other things this weekend. But, uh, yeah, usually that's a once-a-week thing. You get a reminder about the show and what we're doing this week, um, as well as appearances where we're going to different conventions or events. And then also how to support us, which I think most of you guys do, so you don't have to really worry about that. But the donate and by the way i hate that donate button because it, it sends it through paypal which is great but it takes a fee i'd re- much rather you just do it straight through paypal you know and send it to friends and family so you don't have them take their 30 percent 30 percent uh i love that our cup is full though it is like overflowing it's like above <laughs> the line What? Chuck says, I just want to snuggle. Let's play Norwegian death music. Death music. Uh, oh, I am so wound down and ready to relax. Maybe you want to watch a Transformers Tonight movie? Transformers sure. movie tonight? We'll put in part one. And we'll give Netflix a rest. We, we've done like 600 gigs worth of data on our... We're allowed like 22 before they slow our bandwidth. We've done 600. <laughs> and they haven't slowed the bandwidth because we're in the middle of nowhere. Nobody, yeah, I know. Shh, at and All the cows don't have the internet, so it's okay. Mm. <coughs> oh. That's what you think. <laughs> they're out there on their Not phones. On, they're on a different internet. It's okay. They use Verizon. They get lousy reception in this area. <laughs> Oh, so eight minutes, to, seven minutes to go, and we're all just laid back, relaxed. Who are we going to raid? Oh, that's Thank a good question. I'm glad you asked. Cause I was it's like, difficult I'm not to be laid back and relaxed at the four in the fucking morning. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my active time. Oh. We've got... We've got music. We've got... 
video games or we've got Doctor Who. Who? Who? Okay. I've been trying to get um, tickets watching it because it ends the 7th for the fan pack. Right. How about we raid a redhead with a guitar who only has two beers? Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. Should I put the thing up there so everybody can copy-paste it? We'll do this. Let's do this. See if this works out. Let's try this. Uh, okay, so guys, I'm going to post right now. This is the thing you copy-paste. Don't copy-paste the arrow that says copy-paste <laughs> when we raid. Everything on this side. Unless you want to, then whatever. Be rebellious, I don't give a fuck. Okay, let's put another thing there. Make my life Bye, Victoria. Uh, bye, Victoria. Bye, Victoria. Oh, you're not going to join us for the raid? Or should I say, good night, Victoria. There you go, send her out right. There we go. That's the thing you guys can copy paste. And then I'll set up the raid here in a couple minutes. We got five minutes left, which is a good thing because, man, I need a refill break, if you know what I mean. Oof. Good night, Clarice. So hang out, jump over in that raid, and then bail immediately. <laughs> Unfortunately, Clarice couldn't hear the lambs screaming because their Verizon connection wasn't good enough. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And if you haven't already, please give my channel a follow. I'm looking to get 50 followers. I think even Chuck has followed your channel. If not Chuck, click on that link. It'll open up a new tab, follow our channel. And then you could watch us be silly and whatnot. Let's see if we uh, can raid somebody who's not leaving the minute we're raiding. <laughs> yeah, that would be good. That was great. Happens uh, probably. We talked about the perfection. Time. Yeah. It's, so, uh, thank you, Skipper. Appreciate that, bud. It's Skipper. We're glad to see you back. I know you've been away and busy. And mm. Oh, and Skipper, we have more stuff for you. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're coming past us, or when we get down there, we've got more stuff uh, that that I think you'll enjoy having in your My steampunk. Right, yes. Skipper, me. I have postcards for you, but I need an address to send them to. So send him a dress there, Skipper. Facebook me, me Facebook message me. It's probably easiest. Oh, Give me the address of someone you really don't like. I'll send them all to them. <laughs> postman all the way to the delivery. Oh. It's a true story. When I took my licensees exam in this country, which is the qualification you need to hold a personal alcohol sales license, uh, it was myself and a whole bunch of other people all did the course. And the guy who ran the course, Gordy Bray, gets all the certificates sent to him. And then he messaged you and says, hey, guys, your certificates are all here. I'll distribute them to you. And uh, he came to me last. Mine was the last one. He dropped off. And he's like, here. And I said, I want to apologize about this, but I ran out of envelopes. So yours is in the envelope. All the certificates came in. And the, the moderator who marked or assessed all the papers and confirmed the qualifications have mailed them to Gordy. And on the envelope, he'd addressed the envelope. The postman loves anal. Gordy Bray. At, and written underneath in a different color pen was... It's a woman, actually. And yes, how did you know? <laughs> well done. Well done. Touche, postwoman. <laughs> I've still got that envelope somewhere. Talk about taking of a delivery to the back door. Uh, <laughs> nice. Good times. She knew he had a safe box to put it in. <laughs> U.S. Our postal people go postal. There they go anal. <laughs> mm. And I will see most of you sometime this week in our channel. Mm. Good night, Dad. And, uh, you know, I'm going to take us out early because we got one minute left anyway, so it's time. 
Thanks for it's time, people. Discussion shenanigans Close and toast. You are the one thing Man, that makes the show what it time is. time with our crew. Don't forget to join us at the tavern Cheers. next week. Good night, Good night everyone. everyone. Have fun. Good night, Keep flirting. And be good to one another. Now, raise your glass in good cheer. Enjoy the small moments every day and steamy dreams every night.